Hey, we're going to probably visit with uh, tonight with uh, Roger Woolham. Uh, y'all congratulate White Roger. He got a new shop this week. Saw so he had it delivered. It was on Facebook this week. He had it delivered. It was really nice. And Roger, yeah, you going know, to really go big time. And just today, I was sitting around thinking about what an article to be added to the newsletter. We're always looking for folks to add something to our newsletter. Always looking. Did, I, did you miss that just now? Always looking for ads to the newsletter. That means if you do a really unique looking piece or even a good piece, if it's good to you when you look at it, if it looks good to you, it, we want to see it. So take a photograph, 300 DPI of quality, and send it to us, editor at worldwidewoodturners.org. I also an article, and I see where Gerald Jensen has just published the, the uh, guidelines or a, a template and all on how to make <clears throat> golden ratio caliper. Yeah, a pie caliper. Um, and th that is a handy thing if you've got a problem adjusting three by fives. That's pretty close to pi, three by five. Yeah. And if you if you have a, a problem gauging how high and where the, the brake line should be in a piece and all that, the fine caliper really works good. That's a golden ratio caliper. It's a handy thing to have. Um, and there's, that pattern's on the front of the world's finest website dealing with wood turning. I always brag about it because there's none like it in the world. Shop around, try to prove me wrong. You're not going to find it. This is it. David does such an awesome job with what he puts together for us. So we got the world's finest wood, wood turning website. We have an unbelievable newsletter and this meeting each Wednesday evening. And it's all, <clears throat> how do we put this? Free. But we want something from you. We always do. You know, it's like that insurance salesman. Um, this is all great, but but uh, you got to do this. Yeah, mm -hmm. you need to participate. That's all we want. No money changes hands. We don't want you to buy anything or join a magazine or give me money for our club or anything like that. We don't need that. We really don't. We're living on how we're living, and we like it. It's 233 shows. Our meetings ago, we started this thing, and it seems to be clicking, going very well, and we're happy with it. I hope you're happy with it. And we make adjustments as you ask because it's your club, but we want your participation. We want to see what you're doing and the ideas you share and the things you come up with, um, and and like the Phi caliper or the golden ratio caliper uh, and things like that. Those are what... We want to see. We want you to share. And we put all that on the website. In fact, everything you see here tonight, everything you read about, all that goes to the website. Yeah. Like if you have something to share with somebody, an IRD coming up or a club meeting or whatever, and you want to put it and share it with your members, put it in the chat. Get it in there. David reads that chat, takes the information, now puts it in our event list. Unfortunately, some of you folks think, well, this ain't a big deal. Why should I mention it? A lot of times it is a big deal. It's a big deal if there's somebody in your area that would like to say, you know, I live in Buffalo and I see where they got this wood turning club in Buffalo and I want to go check out one of their meetings. And I see they got a meeting and it's in chat. You can say, how, would I, how can I come to that or how can I attend it? How can I can visit or whatever? The very few clubs that don't allow visitors. They always welcome a visitor. Mm -hmm. I, I bought one club that said, you can visit twice, then you have to join. What? What? Is there a secret handshake you got to go through? No. Mm -hmm. You can always visit. You can always share. That's what we do. And, oh, yeah, somebody the other day we had a comment about safety shields and safety glasses about the need to wear them and who wears them, who don't wear them. and why we do this and why we do that. Someone called me the other day. Yeah, right. My phone rang twice this week. Yeah. Um, and the guy was saying, why do y'all push on that? Here's the deal. If you're a novice turner 
beginning turner, young turner, um, or just a turner, and you sit in your shop or at these meetings, and you see me pick up a grind, a stone or a tool and go over to my grinder and put a new edge on it, and I'm not wearing my eye protection or my shield, <clears throat> or I'm sanding and I'll have a respirator, or, 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 and you see me do these things, take these simple steps in wood turning, but I'm not wearing my PPE or any protection, and I'm not protecting myself. You may believe that that's okay because I do it. And if I can do it, you can do it. And nothing galls me more than to look at a club demo or see a club demo where a guy is breaking rules with the excuse, I can't do this with a mask on because I can't see. Or I don't wear those things. I don't have a problem with it. Or I'm just going to take my chance and see how it works out. I tend to see too many pictures of scars and bandages and bobos and all this other stuff. And please don't put those pictures on Facebook. It's gross. I I got to live with that. I don't need to see if you accident and get a smashed finger or whatever. That's not, oh, you know, you tell me, but don't have to show me. God, it's gross. But don't do it. And then we don't have to worry about it. Don't show me because you wouldn't have it happen. So the reason we go a little bit extreme on a safety protection is for your benefit. Because we don't want to show you that there might be a shortcut. There isn't one. There's never been a shortcut to safety. You're either safe or you're not. Pretty simple, isn't it? It's like when you fall off a fence. I agree, Eddie. I yeah, you 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 know that's it. And if you if you take the proper protection, all of a sudden it becomes automatic. Yeah, with some cracks in it this week. Pardon me. I got part of a conversation. I'm I missed out the road. What would you say, Dale? Looks like he's frozen. Yeah, I think uh, he's froze up. Oh, okay. Dale, you look solid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, freeze frame. Of Dale. Um, uh, but but really, you know, that's why we push it. And we have to we have to do that. For us, it's our benefit to try to teach you how to get hurt. We 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 want you to go to shop, we want you to have fun, we want you to turn stuff, show us your stuff and all. We don't want you to get hurt. We really don't. There's not a kid in the crowd here. I mean, a youngster in this crowd's in the 40s. <laughs> Lucky. Um, and we got a couple of those getting into the triple digit numbers, you know? Uh, but, you know, we don't want you to get hurt. We And we try to teach you how to get around it. And the guy said, well, I just don't want to be bothered with it. I don't need them. But I'm getting, you know, I look at my career in the construction industry and look at the things that people had me do, contractors I work for, and I wonder how I lived through some of it, you know. But I was I was a good guy, you know. You know, we got to do this and that. The other day we were going down right off St. Charles Avenue, and we had we got stopped in traffic. And I told my wife, I said, you know, I got arrested for cutting on that tree right there. She said, you want? I said, yep. Superintendent said we got to cut a branch off that tree to get a pound driver in here to build his bank. And I climbed up there with an electric chainsaw and cut a branch off. Climbed down, and a guy named Tony DeMarco, he was a policeman, on detail, arrested me and took me to the second district station and locked me up, put me in handcuffs. For what? Well, it's Everybody against the to cut an oak tree without a permit. Yeah, I didn't know that. Said, I, I told him not to. I told him not to do it. No, he no, he told the cop, he said, well, we had to do that. And he says, he got to get a permit. We ain't got time for that. And he says, you ain't got time to have him. He's going to be at the second district. Somebody's got to come bail him out. And it oh, took boy. about four hours for this guy to get the money together. <laughs> but he went and told his boss that it happened. The guy said, well, let him bail himself out if he wants to get out. <laughs> you know, there's a lot oh, wow. of care. That was, in the, that was 72. That was a long time ago. And, you know, but. Still, you know, I went over the side of a building in a Bozeman's chair to caulk some joints, had my, my safety line tied off on a water pipe, 
the plumber untied it because he didn't want anything tied to his pipes. Mm. <laughs> so I had my hotline it was still tied, but uh, because of, you didn't go tying my pipes, you know. Uh, but it, things like that happen in this world. But today we live in a little bit tighter world, so let's all tighten up a little bit. And we we hear Sue talk to us about you know when you go do this and you do that and. And we're all, we all kind of learned a little bit about PPE when the, the pandemic hit. Did we forget some of that? Did we learn that how much is, how much those little M95 masks helped for to keep stuff out of you, your mouth and your nose and all? Yeah, you have them, you had them. You buy, probably you still get them pretty fairly cheap. They're not they were too uncomfortable. You're going to be sanding or grinding or something. Snap one on. You get done, throw it away. You know, it's a, if you develop a breathing problem, you'll thank me. Yep. Really. It's a simple, it's a simple trick. It's like eye protection. Um, I, I used to love it when you see a guy grinding and he's like this. <laughs> you really think that's working? <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Give me a break. Those those particles know you're squinting, and it won't hit the squints. <laughs> um, yeah, I, you, you know they I, rock back further if their arms were longer. <laughs> yeah, I, I worked in a in a in a, in a shipyard type atmosphere back in the early seventies. I was a superintendent on a job. We we're building some office buildings for offshore, and told the guy to grind off an iPad. And he sat down and started grinding going in. I said, you really don't want to sit like that. He says, more comfortable. And I said, but you don't, you got to see where the sparks are going. I'm all right. He said, fire those pants in the crotch area. <laughs> yeah, you talk about it. Talk about find out if he could dance. When he Natural could dance. Selection. Um, Natural selection at its finest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you ever had a piece taken out of your eye, you wouldn't do that again for nothing. Yep. No. Yeah. The dirt, mm-hmm. the dirt, the dirt, theory. You know, a piece of steel. They go in with a dental pick and pick it out, and they take a Dremel tool and grind the top of your the surface of your eye, and it's a uh, it's beauty. Yeah, you oh, only I, 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 I think once or twice I've had the dirt in my eye. Yeah, when I was, I think when I was in Vietnam, the super dust storm hitting. Uh, the next day, you know, you get that constant drip, 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 and. Uh, yeah, you know, first thing I said, they're blind to me. Can I go home? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work. Um, but you know, we let's take a few precautions. Let's try to get a little safer. Yeah. Um, and it's just that, that one little second, as Jim just said, if you what you skip has got a that's that's down payment, which the, the long time payment for, for what happens if you miss is really, really rough really rough hey we're gonna hear from our safety girl a little bit sue she te- she texted me today about getting some uh, double stick tape and i sent her a tip an idea what i like is i went to my i, I was on my ipad when i got the message i was at clink and uh just got there and i put i clicked on it i, I pressed a little in button where you can talk to the computer and i said tape and what popped up was um, a live feed from the Daytona Bike Festival and Daytona Beach this week of a tape bikini contest. Boy. Yeah. they No bikini. Uh, it was just uh, hey. tape. <laughs> um, they, in some situations, they needed a little more tape. <laughs> uh huh. Mm-hmm. A lot more tape. It depends on the viewer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but I hope throughout I got the right information. Um, the the I came home. The plumber came in to work on some stuff. He's still back there working on something for us. Um, and I was looking up the the tape thing and. He he was telling me he uses duct tape, D U C T, a double sided duct tape, 
And I said, how does it work? And went out to his truck and he's got a, a safety box on the door of his truck. And it, you know, full size safety cabin. He's got two strips of double stick tape on it stuck on the side door of his truck and it don't move. It's been up there for a long time. And he said, if you do wood turning with that, be sure you got a relief notch because you ain't getting it off by pulling on it. So I like the Sure Tape, S H U R T A P E. I like that brand because it's it's got a fabric basis to it and it doesn't fail as easy as some of that junky tape. But uh, what, I guess Sue might share a little bit about her turning with us tonight. If you've got something to share with us this evening, it's open. Remember our format, it's open. We welcome you and your input. Your, we want to see what you do. Remember, we're going to ask you what kind of wood it is. We're going to kind of ask you about the size. But the only question that will always be asked, no matter what, is what kind of finish is it? And that's mm -hmm. that's the important one because every one of us has got an opinion on finishes. Our opinion is wrong, but we all have an opinion on finishes. So we're going to go to taking some of that in. And later on, we'll hear from, probably hear from Tim Hatch about SWAT, which is coming up August 23, 24, and 25 in Waco, Texas. And uh, I think we have a AAW event coming up real soon. It's going to be in Portland, Oregon. Talk about across the country for that one. So if you've got an event coming up for, and you want to put it on the event calendar, remember what I told you. Go to the, ch the chat thing and write to us and let us know about it because we want to share that information. It, none of this stuff is secret, remember? You know, it, it's it, if you've got the secret on wood turning, it's secret. Okay. Mm. Um, what we got for gallery tonight? Anybody special? Oh, gosh, we got quite a list coming in already, Eddie. All right, let's rock. Now let's do it. Let's see. Let's go to Mr. Slaughter. Dale, we got okay. you. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> first thing is my first attempt at a three sided bowl or whatever you want to ah. call it, the cube with the cube. There you go. Yeah, I did it. Uh, it was a four foot or uh, four inch cube of, of pine my first attempt and I didn't take the tenon off because I'm afraid I got a little deep inside. <laughs> if I take the tenon off, it's going to end up the funnel. You got to get creative with how you do that then. You don't want to take the tenon off, you want to blend it into the base. And uh, if you want to see me do it, you can go on the Worldwide Wood Turners site and look my name up and find my youtube channel and i did video it and it's on my youtube channel but there it's in go. real time i haven't learned how to edit well yet so i haven't <laughs> edited it. so you'd have to watch the whole hundred hour and 20 minutes and i did a vase for steve's hashtag week very nice nice that's cool that's cool, cool. yeah and that's uh looks good. Hampshire sheen intrinsic. What's the string? Stains. And that's just like ordinary it. string. That's cute. Did ordinary a good job string. on that. And Did it, create a crack? it it already had a crack in it. The back's got there, you can see the back's got a crack in it. The other side had a crack up here, and I just took my Dremel and widened it, cut some. Action. Right on. Looks nice. What else you got? Froze Jeez. up. I like that idea. <laughs> okay, let's see. We do a Dave a Dale Slaughter impression. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, <laughs> go see Mr. Johnson. Hey, Howie. Hey. Greetings, everyone, from beautiful Crowley, Texas. Nice day today. Temperature in the 70s. Rain tomorrow. Wow. But anyway, um, with Easter coming up, I decided I'd make a bowl commemor commemorating Easter. And uh, I went ahead and engraved the, the uh, 
crown of thorns and of course the the cross on it and a little That's bit of sweet. a little bit of these are little bitty i don't know if you can tell or not but they're little little bitty crosses but this guy easter lilies on them so i engraved that so anyway and this is this is just acrylic paint thin acrylic paint and uh, so but then this is spalted hackberry wow that's very neat. nice the camel very yeah. pretty i found a way to make it spalt pretty quickly you just wrap it in that uh, shrink wrap stuff that you see people look pallets and stuff and uh you wrap it in that and it'll it'll spalt in a couple of months really real quick and that's what happened yeah. to this one and when i took it out of the wrap this thing was wet i mean it was wet and i turned it wet and i'm surprised it didn't it didn't work except for right here there's a little crack here i don't know if you can tell it yeah right here yeah, yeah. you see <laughs> a little bit of a hump right there see yeah, like mm -hmm. building a mountain. Yeah, there you go. And uh, but other than that, I'm surprised. But anyway, that's uh, that's that's my contribution to the gallery tonight. I do appreciate you letting me share. Very nice, Pat Howard. Very Thank nice. You. Thank you. All right, go to me. Let's go over to Alabama and see what Mr. Gary's got. Hey, Gary. Oh, okay. Doug Miller was talking about using the <laughs> one inch uh, core box bits. Mm -hmm. I was going to show some little boxes that I made using a one inch core box bit periodically from time to time. This is the one I was talking about. That I made some that were a little smaller that I put uh, beeswax, mineral oil, board butter in. For my granddaughter <laughs> to grease her lips with and she oh, got some of her her friends got some of these nice and they're cute little boxes and they were cored out with the box bit and then just a regular acorn and nice board out put the uh, small jaws inside and expand turn just about whatever you want out of it and you can do them <laughs> as fast as you can do a spin top just about mm -hmm. right on oh no nice nice gary they Thank all you. look great what does this tool this box in tool thing look like core box bit right. just a yeah. router bit. bit with a round oh, router bit okay round router bit started. We'll get Doug to show his when, when we get to Doug. Okay. Yeah, I got it right okay. here. All right, here, let's just go to Doug now. Okay. While the topic is fresh. <laughs> it okay. looks like that. <laughs> All right, you got me now? Yep. Okay, just making sure because we had that trouble last week. Um, several things. I showed you guys. I don't know, three weeks ago, maybe this one, this offset walnut bowl, um, finally got it finished. I had to finish that thing probably three times. Um, the latest, this, this rendition of the finish is the, uh, Krylon triple, triple thick. That was a practice piece for this one. This is the King wood. Um, that's got, that's finished with Bill buffing system. Went that's from raw pretty. wood, put on a one quick coat of, uh, <laughs> standing sealer and then use the buffing system on it um back wow. this had That's both a recess and a tenon in it and i had to use a uh, a dremel grinder to uh, a, a grinding tool to to uh take the, all that mess out of there because i didn't didn't prepare for it so uh i, I keep learning on these that's <laughs> that's the thing <laughs> we got to keep learning on them so anyway there's the the profile on it just kind of a nice profile nice rounded a little bit of an og but not very much so anyway, that came, out, that came out pretty nice. Um, yes, it hey, uh, went further. I've had a, a couple of my stores say they still want mushrooms for whatever reason. So I've I've turned a few mushrooms. This one's out of a, a white seed. You got muted, Doug. You went mute.
There we go. Yeah, it said yep. you did it. <laughs> no, anyway. I didn't do it. Wasn't me. Whatever. Anyway, uh, white cedar it. fence posts. These came out of uh, off a farm here in Kentucky, and so I, I've turned this one. I turned a, a regular red cedar. I, you know, four or five of them. I turned. Uh, my laced up bowl. Can't hardly see the laces because they're brass. This light is terrible. There we go. Now you can see them. Out of brass. Yeah. That's that's some more. That's some more of that spalted hackberry we've been talking about already. Um, that was naturally spalted though. That's why it fell out of the tree. This was a limb that was about, I don't know, 27, 28 inches. that fell out of a massive hackberry Whoa. tree. Yeah, it was huge. It was huge. Uh, if somebody had been under it, it killed them for sure. Uh, did a box the other day. Uh, this was a lot of, uh, yesterday, I guess this was a lot of fun. It goes, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun on that one. So uh, anyway, that was done just because one of the stores I'm in is selling loose leaf tea. Uh, you buy it by the ounce and um, took a couple boxes down there. They said, oh, those would be great for putting tea in. There's another one. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Core box bit. Just as simple as that, Brenda. And in your router, that's that's spinning at however fast routers go. It's it spins pretty fast. Um, I'm using it in a a Jacobs chuck um, to to hollow out little tiny bowls that are about an inch and an eighth or so uh, in diameter on the outside. A one inch on the inside, just slightly bigger on the inside or outside. So, hey Doug, Doug, do you put anything in that uh, in the tea box? on the inside or do you just leave that natural uh i'm oiling them i'm using walnut oil is all i'm using okay uh, by the time it it dries a few days it has no smell left um I, to use for tea or anything like that nothing that'll smell for sure um probably would be better to leave them plain um but i'm putting oil on them just because i can't stand to put something out there with nothing on it Got you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Do you find the core box bit leaves much uh, tear root in the bottom? No, ma'am. It's pretty smooth. Could you handle that and uh, hold it by hand? Um, Dane was saying there last week they're they're kind of aggressive and grabby. I've not had that experience, but I've not put mine in a handle. I've always had mine in yeah. a Jacob's chuck stuck in my my. Uh, tail stock mm -hmm. so i i've not had an issue with it like i said it's been held pretty stoutly mechanically uh, instead so of with a handle drill, if you're if you're just using it to drill straight on there wouldn't be an issue by having it in, in a handheld uh apparatus but to have it as a turn as a hollowing tool it would rip your arm off mm. because it's too it's too aggressive of a cut you can go up to you could probably you could probably use a three eighths box box core bit for a for a hollowing tool, but I I wouldn't recommend it. I use a quarter inch and it is aggressive as hell and it and it eats away wood and, and it leaves an immaculate finish. But to mm -hmm. use a one inch as a hollowing bit, no. In the sense of hollowing, not drilling. Yeah. Drilling is fine, you know, because you're going straight on into the center. There's there's no lateral pressures going mm -hmm. against you. No, I see. What you speed you run, Doug? Thank you. No, what speed you you run the box uh, core bit on? Um, when I'm drilling out my little mini bowls, I'm usually going about uh, uh, huh. seven, eight hundred, something like that. Okay, All right. Because I know you use them on routers, and routers are high speeds. So that's why I was asking. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Uh, but for what I'm doing, I'm I've got a little limb that's I've stuck in my my uh, uh, chuck just in grain so I'm I'm cutting in grain with that with that box core bit and it it cuts it smooth and clean at about seven eight hundred something like that I'm just asking that's all I, I wasn't sure because yeah. right? I know that you know that's fine that's cool yeah. thank you sure that's a great idea though Doug great idea thank you yeah. anything else Doug that's all I've got today. Golly, that's enough. 
<laughs> All right. Well, let's see. Let's see what he's got to show. Ah, so, a piece of ambrosia maple that Mark mm. Soleil had sent me. Gosh. And on the bottom for my foot is gold leaf, which was my wife's idea. Mm -hmm. And then for the fennel, the fennel and the beauty ring are both ebonized with uh, iron acetate. They are cherry. And then for the fennel, my wife also designed it, and she wanted a, wow. a spear, and she wanted it gold leafed. <laughs> that's pretty. Pretty. Wow. Nice. That's pretty. Very nice. That's name. Gorgeous. Mm, really mm, mm. gorgeous. Can anybody guess what the finish is? Tongue oil. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. How many coats? It's got six coats on it. Oh, gosh. That's gorgeous. Thank you. Just, just another ho hum piece from Dane. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> I, like, I, like hollow, I like my hollow horns. That's but, uh, yeah, it was the, um, Mark Slade sent me the piece of wood, I don't know, probably four or five years ago. And so I'll be damned, I lost it. I was looking for another piece of wood and came across it. And I'm like, oh, wow. And this is the first time I've ever turned ambrosia maple. Um, so I was really stoked <clears throat> and impressed with how it turned. Uh, Beautiful wood to work with. So it's a beautiful that's piece. me. Thank Dang, you. All. Which, and that's which beautiful. Finish? Are you using the? You said tongue oil. Is it a process, or are you making it? No, it's Minwax um, tongue oil that you buy at uh, the box store. Okay. And I did write up my process, and it should be in the newsletter for the next issue. Great. It's also on YouTube. Yep. Yep. Uh, and I know the April 12th video of 2023 has it. Um, but yep. All right. So that's me. Let's go to, go to Mr. Kenny. Hey, Tom. Oh. Hi, Tom. Howdy. 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 Several years ago, a friend of mine at work gave me a reciprocating cutter. So I commenced to turning something that could use the cutter on. And that is a six inch piece of mahogany. And I did the carving on it and turned it around, finished it off and brought it in to show them. And I uh, was very proud of it. And I said, I'm gonna make you one. So I got a second piece, did all the carving, turned it around and turned right through the bottom. So it's been uh, sitting oh. on a shelf for oh, probably eight or 10 years for me to finally get around to fixing it. But one of these days I will, but this is the one survivor. And again, it's uh, mahogany and the finish was uh, just spray uh, death lacquer. Very nice. That's all we got. Very pretty. Beautiful. Thank Beautiful. you. Nice, Tom. Appreciate well it. Well done, Tom. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go to Mr. Dawson. Well, hello there. How's everybody? Doing good, Al. Okay. Um, first of all, um, don't see you. You don't. You don't see me? There you uh, go. Give us a minute. We got him. You don't want to see me. <laughs> anyway, um, Steve showed us about making a, uh, a square inside of a square. Um, the square inside doesn't look very good. And I had a square sitting there. I said, well, let me see if I could do what Doug showed me of uh, making a sphere. Uh, I it, it kept getting loose and I kept tightening it and I started hearing little cracks. So it didn't turn into a, a completely you know, uh, sphere, sphere, spherical sphere. But uh, I thought it was something different playing around with it, you know. Um, cool. There was that. Uh, there's, I've been making little, little, I don't know, I'm staying busy, but uh, vases. Uh, I found uh, the little test tube 
you guys told me where to go, but I thought that was nice. Yeah. It's very neat. Very nice. It is nice. Very nice. Um, then I've got, uh, let's see here. <clears throat> yeah. This here. I put this on Facebook. I think some of you have seen it. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Yeah. That's neat. Yeah, that That's is pretty. Neat. Beautiful birds. That's Ruby right there. Hey. <laughs> and uh, now this doesn't have much to do with wood turning, but I, I was you know looking at it and I, I saw this. Uh, I don't know if you guys, it's a seashell. And uh, I I was watching a fella. I, I think his YouTube is called uh, a cut above, and it's simply just called seashell, and it's all made on a scroll saw, and, and all it is is uh, two little seven inch pieces of two by four, and that's what this was. And and he's a uh, he has a very good video showing you how to do it. I think Bob showed uh, on YouTube that he made one. Uh, a little bit while back, he he was able to make it curl even even more than I did. Uh, his is really pretty. Um, let's see what else. Uh, well, coming up for, for Easter, this is a, an idea for anybody. Maybe you want to give a little Easter gifts. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. Uh, empty tube. Yeah. For Easter coming. No, I um, again, um, made a, another little dog for for my neighbor. That the wood that he gave me. Yeah. Uh, I love those dogs. That is cute. You got a tail that's, on it. That's cute. Uh, I should probably put one on there, though, huh? And um, I was watching uh, uh, Paul Finley. I think Doug. This one's for you. What do you think? <laughs> looks all right. Yeah, looks good. Looks great, really. Very nice. Yeah. You should, Al, you should right. on your next. You should make the umbrella bigger. <laughs> um, it, it's it. I, I don't like I don't like the hat or the umbrella. I was gonna do everything again. Um, this was just out of a piece of uh Leland cypress, and um, I I'm gonna make more of it. It's it's a lot of fun. This is a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah it's cute. It was a lot of fun. Um, that's all I've got. Wait, wait, it looks like it. Pardon? I yes, said, that's, that's all you got? All righty. Thanks for sharing. All right, let's go to Mr. Bundy. Hey, Charlie. Hello. I have a few things because you missed, we didn't do it last week. This is just a cup. This is made out of red cedar. Beautiful. That's pretty. Very nice. <laughs> Can't see it. Bone well, red cedar is getting hard for me to I, on the bottom. They don't come as small. Another one made out of cedar. They're all alike, but not alike. <laughs> these these two cups would have been like that in the in the tree. They're all off. Cool. That it was off the same chunk of wood. Beautiful. And nice, it's, Charlie. It's tongue oil. Nice finish. Coating. <clears throat> this one is out of red oak. Pretty. That's nice too. This is a disaster. This spent a while in the recovery room. <laughs> this is red oak. Looks nice now. Yeah. But uh, there's three different cracks, and they went flying. But they were big enough pieces I could glue them together. <laughs> nice. Can't tell I say. This is made out of applewood. <clears throat> it's a crop. <clears throat> Mm. Very nice. 
That is yeah. nice. I like the bark left on in places. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty. The, the, the tree has <clears throat> been dead for quite a while. And I've had it just laying outside on the ground. I didn't think the bark could stay on it. Beautiful. It is very nice. It is. That's all I got. Right on, Charlie. Looks great. Good, Good job, Charlie. Thank you. All right. Let's go to... I'm going to put it in alphabetical order this time. <laughs> Go to Ruby. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. Uh, for the kitchen, I made a new mug tree just out of leftover scrap pieces that otherwise were going to be burned. Is that a new one from the last one? Yep. Right on. That's cool. pretty. <laughs> and then... Uh, a couple of tennis balls. Wow. Do they bounce? No, they don't, they don't they bounce very well, but uh, they do oh, wow. come apart. My God. There's the inside of the one. And then you push this out, and you have a box. Oh, oh that's goodness. That's pretty cool. No, wow. So it's there. It's just a matter of getting them all the parts to slide together. Like I said, <laughs> again, it's easier to make them. <laughs> I was thinking it's easier easy. to make them to put it back together. <laughs> so, all right, all right. Did you did you create a, a track? Did, did you create a, a track to to slide that on or? Yeah, there is a track in there. Uh, if you look closely at that, you can see right. where it was turned halfway from each side to form this mm -hmm. little ridge here. Okay. Right. And then when you make this part, you, you just uh, do a small <clears throat> hole in there like these. When it was turned, we're... Uh, we're like a cylinder. Huh. You can make the, the, the box part. And then on each of these halves, they have the same little ledge that the other parts fit into. Uh huh. Wow. Cool. Wow. Good idea. Okay. That looks complicated. <laughs> it Where was. It, it's not something you can pop <laughs> off in an hour or two. No, no. I believe it. So it takes so it takes some practice. Yes, I love challenges. Right? <laughs> How many yes, tries? That's really cool. Okay. How many right. times did you try? <laughs> Don't tell them. No, I, I got them on the first. I got them on the first try. Oh, you did, boy. That's great. <laughs> Mind you, I had somebody guiding me through the process. Okay. So that, that helped significantly. Sure. Well, that was hey, Bob, fantastic. Hey, Bob, it's kind of it's kind of like a smoker, you know. They quit smoking every night when they go to bed. So, <laughs> first yeah. try, every, it's the first try every time you put a new piece on. <laughs> sure. Okay. <Yeah. laughs> uh, we believe you, Ruby. I've been there. All right. Thanks, You're Ruby. Going to someone else now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh Lord. Let's see. Did you just call? <laughs> my line. That's my line. Good one. When 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 I taught school and, and one of the kids would come out with that expression, I'd just turn and say, Did you call? Were there any messages? <laughs> when I was coaching wrestling, whenever whenever my name would be used in vain, and I'd I'd go and say, Yes, you you rang. <laughs> All right, let's uh go to Mr. King. Hey, Howie. We got you now. Uh oh, there's Howard. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm eating some cabbage and cornbread. So, All right, we're, we're, we're not in the room with you. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, everybody's talking about spalded uh, hackberry. I don't have any spalded hackberry. I just got the regular kind. And so uh, <laughs> the natural edge uh, bow, Adam, just regular hackberry. And I guess I should have waited and let it get some spalting on it. It'd fit in better tonight, I guess. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, it does seem a spalting thing. Yeah. So anyway. A oh, beautiful piece. It's a nice job. Nice and, job. Uh, does it fit on your head? Pardon? Yes. Does it fit on your head? <laughs> It ought to. Perfect. <laughs> yep, I figured it would. Yep, look at that. Nice. <laughs> I think Napoleon. No. It was yeah. Napoleon. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, I my, wife, my, my wife says to uh, do it like this. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> like Devo. Drive down the highway like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's all yeah. you know. But it, Anyway, oh, no, you messed uh, up your hair. Made a little bitty uh, bow out of maple, and it's got just a beautiful figure to it. I don't know if you can, if you can tell it or not. Oh, yeah. Yes, see yeah, it is pretty. Maybe you see it better. That like was that. very thin. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty thin. You know, it'll probably float, probably. I guess. Wow. But uh, the president of our club, Mister Gary Hales, he gave us a. a our thing to do for the club this next meeting is to turn something out of pine. And so I, I had this um, uh, three quarter inch by six inch board. And so I turned it, made it to a little disc and I tried to pierce it. And pine's not too good for piercing because <laughs> it. I started trying to sand between all these, and I kept hearing crack, 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 crack. So it started falling apart. So I just stopped at that point. So anyway, it's wow. about an eighth of an inch thick. And so anyway, kind of terrible. Take, if you take Pardon? a piece, if you take a piece of walnut or something a little bigger than that, and just turn a disc with a groove in it, that that would set into you could still use it for like a trivet well i guess i guess so yeah because it needs support because it, yeah. it's it's kind of flexible Indeed. And, uh, got a bunch of broken parts to it so anyway so I mean, anyway I, design I, has it's pretty neat though yeah now i know what yeah now I know why I don't like to turn pine, you know. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, five right, three by four club. Yeah. That's all I got. Ah, oh, great. Good nice. stuff there, Howard. <clears throat> hey, when you you got that other bowl you posted earlier? Uh, the one on Facebook? Yeah. Uh I can go get it, I guess. Well, hurry up. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I got I got to finish eating my my uh, All right. cabbage, my cabbage, and my cornbread, and my black eyed peas. We'll, we'll get you after the demo then. But oh, yeah, okay. that. that's that's a beautiful piece, Howard. Okay. All right. I'll go get it. All righty. All right. Let's go to let's go to our editor at large here. Hey, Joaquin. Howdy. So I just got one piece. I been in the shop every day, but I'm doing a uh, urn of stacks slices of walnut. So uh, that's Your mic a long... is cracking. Your mic uh, is cracking. I'm sorry. Uh, it's my computer mic. I'm not sure what to do. And I've, I've been in the shop every day. I'm doing an urn of stack slices of walnut, and that's taking time. So I am being productive. But uh, this is a custom order. Speaking of salt, for the salted elm. And uh, I use popcorn for the rattle. There you go. So that's going to a uh, friend out in Washington or in California. Um, but I have a truckload of this elm. It was felled last July. And you, you can see the reason they cut the tree down. But every single chunk of it has this wonderful salt in it. It's really pretty. We need a demo on that. I'd like to see that done. 
Oh, we can probably make that happen. What a coincidence, JJ. <laughs> now I know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> right? it takes all the guesswork out of it. Right? Don't have to worry about it. Now. Yeah, it works for me. That's all I got for today. But all right. I see a lot of people who would look really fantastic in the newsletter. So uh, email those uh, email those photos to me, please. You got my, mine came through okay, right? I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I've got it all. Good. Got to sit down and make it make sense. Right on. Right on. All right. Let's uh, let's get one more in. One more gallery, and then we'll do um, safety Sue, and then we'll get to our demonstration for the evening. Dan, we got you. Wake oh, up. Okay. <laughs> I was watching. Uh, uh, watching the back of the eyelids. <laughs> <laughs> I was making these out of pine in their boxes. Uh, and they are tight. That one's real tight. <laughs> that one's real tight. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to get it loose, but Maybe they all tight up. I don't know. Oh, you must got some humidity going on. Yep. Well, this one's a walnut one. And it come apart. Nice pop. And all the grain uh, matches up. And I did have a Get couple that it. messed up and I got a hole in them. So I put a... Bedazzle. Bedazzled it, yeah. And I had another one. So now I got a pair of bedazzles. There you go. <laughs> and I started. I didn't know what to call them. <laughs> but I got a whole box full of them. And I put them in my spalted box. <laughs> or bowl. Oh, hey. there you go. Spalted bowl. Hey. What a thing. Started making mushrooms, and wow, this it looks one like they pulled it out of the woods. Yep. Yeah. And this one I got a catch in. Ah. Oh, no, that's just where that's just where the deer took a bite of it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I made twelve more of them, but I don't have them finished yet. So <clears throat> you'll be looking forward to that to next week. Well, they look great. But yeah. I'm going to cut this in half and stick it on the refrigerator with a magnet. That'll cool. work. There you go. Nice save. Like it. That way you don't have to burn it. Because it's just a smoothing glass. <laughs> yeah. Good job, Barry. Dan. Yep. Thank you much. Now, what and you could do with you know what you could do with that? You could, you could paint paint some brown underneath the bottom of it, you know, to make it look, make it look like a toadstool. Yeah. Yep. Boy, some of these really did lock up. <laughs> 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 I can't even break them loose. <laughs> put them in the refrigerator. Yeah, yeah, put it in the freezer. What kind of finishes on them? Uh, that is... Uh, Mimwax uh, mm -hmm. spray. Sometimes if it's not real dry, you just stick them together. If they fit tight, solidifies. Yep. But a lot of these have been spoken for, so. <laughs> Those are nice. What is yep. the inside diameter of them? Uh, they're a half inch, and the tenon is a five eighths. Okay, very nice. And they're very quick to make. They're pretty easy. I've tried them before. I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but if you use something other than yeah. pine, you can put designs in it. You know, like this. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. and stuff. The pine, it'll just chew it up. But I know what the people want these for that claimed them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tight fit required. Matches, yep. right? Yeah. But he said, oh, the cops won't know what they are. They could probably use some of my uh, cigarette lighters too, then, huh? Yeah, yeah, they would go. They would go good with your cigarette lighters, Brenda. Don't leave out that crowd. They got money. Yeah, or stuff like that. Yeah, but not yeah. school loan. It's yeah, don't, yeah, don't get me started on. Yeah, yeah, don't get me started. All right. Wait till the after. Dan, what did you make those uh, bands? Those colored bands out of. Dan, how did you uh, make those colored bands? Oh, I that's just the alcohol ink marker. Oh. And I uh, burnt lines in it so it wouldn't pass over it. Cool. It and looked great. Got to let that alcohol really dry good. Otherwise, it'll run and put awesome. light coats on it. But it makes them interesting, you know. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> I found out putting these little uh, designs on it. Good idea. Thanks. Yeah. Helps them pulling them apart, you know. Right. If they don't stick together. <laughs> especially, when, especially when you might be half baked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I got it free. <laughs> Oh, nice. Nice. And I messed one up because I didn't get a good fit. It was too loose because you don't want it to open up. And so I tried to save on it and I put uh, epoxy around here. Yep. And <clears throat> I tried to turn it again and it worked, but it didn't line up exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, so hmm. yeah, maybe live and learn. <laughs> well done, Dan. Every day. Thank you. All right. Let's go. That's all I got. Sue. Hey, Sue. Hi, guys. How are you? I, I'm not in the room that you normally see me in. I'm actually I in my that. And a half, a little over half of the floor room is my turning room. So, first I'm going to show you my turning stuff. And uh, there you go. Nice. You're back oh, to turning then? Well, I want to get back to it. I got a new vacuum system and uh, got some wood and a few things and yeah, I'm ready to go. All right. So, all, all the hey. is in the uh, garage that I use for my flat stuff. Come on. There we go. We're back. The last time you, we, we talked, we were talking about environmental safety. This time we're going to peruse occupational safety. I mean, Operational safety. Let's see. Keep the speed appropriate for the size and balance of the turning blade. And a lot of us do that. But if your lathe is vibrating and walking across the room, you know <laughs> the speed is just too fast and you need to tone it down. Uh, also, if you're not comfortable with the speed you've got it on, turn it down. Don't go into a piece that uh, you're afraid to hit because it's going too fast. Use common sense. Uh, slow down if the lace is shaking or vibrating. I already hit that. Keep fingers away from, the, from rotating wood. 
I would think you would, especially if there's bark involved and branches involved. So yeah. Mm. And keep your arms and hands away from the rotating chuck. I think we covered that with the chuck that with the rounded corners. And, you know, we've all hit the chuck once or twice. And uh, it it hurts <laughs> a little bit, but it hurts. Don't do that. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> Don't leave sharp tools sitting around in a manner that makes the sharp edge dangerous to thoughtless grabs. Mm -hmm. You don't uh, grab something that you just sharpened by the tip of the gouge, because it's not your hands you want to gouge. Don't stand directly in line of the rotating wood. Again, we have talked about this. Even when you're turning on the lathe, stand to the side. You don't need to be right on top of that wood and to to meet that wood personally and close up. So be careful about that. And also maintain your, your lathe. You know, make sure, sure that your bed bedways are smooth and clean. Check your your uh, rubber tires every once in a while. Make sure that if they need changing, then get get some more belts and get them changed. Uh, I have a midi lathe, but I have a bigger lathe. And you just need to maintain uh, whatever the instructions. And if you need help, don't call me, <laughs> but you need to call Dane or somebody else, somebody that's experienced in that stuff. Or if you belong to a local club, call one of your club members. But in any case, guys, be safe this week. And uh, I'm hoping to start turning soon and uh, we'll go from there. But have a great week. Stay safe. I hope to see you next week. Yep. You too, Thank Sue. Thank you, Sue. That's great. Thanks, yeah. Sue. You're welcome. All right. So let's, uh, let's go to our demonstrator for the evening. We got Mr. Matt Harbor up. Matt's going to be putting on a wonderful demo for us. Matt's demo. He may or may not want uh, questions solicited during the uh, demo. You know, if he does want to have questions uh, to clarify anything, he will he will ask for them during the the demo. But otherwise, keep all questions and comments until the end of the demo, and then you can ask Matt uh, to your heart's content. And if you have questions, you can put them in the chat. Uh, at certain points, I may or may not uh, ask Matt, you know, based upon what he's doing. So I don't want to interrupt him as well. And with, with that, Matt, I am going to mute everybody. So I will need you to mute, unmute yourself. So I'm muting everybody now. Go ahead, Matt. Okay. Uh, thank we you. Welcome. You. Uh, I, I'm Matt Harbor. Can you all hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Um, tonight, I'm going to be doing a, a, a natural edge goblet demonstration. Okay, we're going to try to keep the bark on. Uh, let me show you some examples before we get started. Uh, let's see. Let's go to this one here. Okay, so this is my practice piece from this afternoon. Uh, this piece of wood is the piece I'm going to use to demonstrate on. It's already got a tenon on it, and it's in the chuck. But this is this is the piece that I'm going to try. To, this is my target piece. Uh, I can show things like I'm not going to do a captured ring tonight, but you're certainly uh, able to do that. This is one option. Um, I tend to favor these kinds of arrangements at the top uh, of the uh, of the stem, and one of the reasons I do that is my my piece is actually a little bit deeper into the into the stem area here. Um, a lot of the goblets I turn, I turn them wet. Um, so this is another example. This piece is cherry. The techniques you turn, uh, you see tonight will let you get this thin on the stem. Uh, and I will show techniques tonight that will show you how to get this thin in the wall, too. Okay, this is a piece of silver maple. Hey, Matt, your, your mic Matt your microphone is breaking up. 
I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, I don't know how can you hear. How is this any better? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any questions so far? No. All right. Um, I think that this is uh, a piece of Bradford pear. I'm not sure. Um, I've got a couple of uh, things to look out for. I've got a, a interesting sort of a bark issue here, and I've got a knot here. So hopefully they will not cause problems, but we'll see. So the first thing uh, that that I, I, I uh, th these are some other pieces that I've turned. Uh, the first thing that I do is I, is I turn a tenant. So this is a cutaway look at, at, at the inside of the goblet in general. Um, and the first thing I'm doing is I'm, is I'm making a tenon and getting it into the chuck. So that's, I've already done that to save time. We all know how to do that. So these are the steps that I'm going to do now. The first step is to turn the outside of the bowl. The second step is to hollow the bowl, removing tailstock support while I do that. And I'll talk about that when I get there. And then after I do step two, which is hollowing the bowl, I then will bring up some tailstock support for the inside of the bowl. And then I'll begin working towards the headstock. And this is important, especially if you want to be thin, because um, you need that, that the bulk of the wood at the headstock to support what you're doing. And then the last thing I'm going to do is shape the base and part it off. Okay, any questions so far in any of this? No, that's great. All great right. slide. All right. Thank you. Um, I will switch to here and start turning. So the first thing I'm going to do is shape the bowl, and I'm going to shape it up here. And I'm going to use my uh, uh, my deep fluted bowl gouge for that. And the shape that I tend to do is I tend to do a shape that's got a sort of a tulip look at the top of it. And the reason I do that is because so that I can get a little bit more of the bark in here. Because I think that for if you're trying to make a piece like this, I think that having the bark on it and having more of the bark helps accentuate the piece. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to gradually, this is ever so slightly getting smaller as I go to here. And I'm going to stop about here when I'm turning the bowl so I know where to stop the inside hollowing. Okay? Sounds good. Deep fluted bowl gouge. If people ask how fast I turn, I like to turn fast. Um, so often I will tell people that I'll, I'll turn it till the lathe starts walking around and then turn it down a little. Um, so always turn things... it up. Always turn it up a little bit to get past that resonation point. Yep. So. One of the things that, that, that I'm doing here is I'm setting the cut up at a, at a shearing angle before I even hit the wood. So I'm riding the cut. The, I'm already cutting before I get to the wood, and I just lost a big piece of the bark there. But the, it's, it's shearing before I get there. So what I've done here is I've defined the bottom of my ball, and now I'm ready to go in and start hollowing. Oh, yeah, I was the bark was head issues. <laughs> Never fails. Yeah, so uh I I'm on, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a little crazy here with the augmentation. So because I've got bark missing, I'm gonna scorch it up a little bit. Maybe if I can get this thing to light. Maybe not. All right, have to do it another time. It's cold here, guys. Uh the wind chill outside is only 13 degrees, so uh, my, my butane lighter isn't lighting. <laughs> okay. So before I take away tail stock support, I want to tighten my chuck. So I'm going to tighten and tighten. Even if your wood is dry, the wood is still going to move and the chuck jaws are still going to compress it a little before you take away the tail stock support. Um, you want to, you want to make sure everything's really tight because it don't have any support now when you get out here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my skew and I'm going to make a little dimple. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a, a drill and do a, a depth 
uh, find do a depth finding on it. So this is a skew. I'm using it as a scraper. I'm putting the point in first like this. We'll switch to this one here, going in like this. And I'm just going to make a little dimple for the drill bit to, to register. That's all I'm doing. Now I'm going to go back to this view. And I'm going to get out a... And I'm and I'm only going to want to go like that deep. So let's move this. Mark it. Questions. So when you're when you're drilling out the center, is it primarily to mark the depth, or is it primarily to get rid of uh, that center mass that's barely turning or all the above? It is a little bit trying to get rid of the center mass that's always turning, and you could certainly use a Forstner bit if you want to, you know, if you want to get, uh, a, you know, remove a little bit more of the wood, but it's primarily just to set the depth, and you don't even have to do this step. I'm just doing it to show it, and and because it makes the demo go smoother. Um, but, uh, and I have certainly turned these without doing this step. Um But, and I'm not going to do the Forstner bit step because it's more interesting if you turn it. And uh, remember to move, you know, pull your drill out and remove the chips off. And so those things don't get stuck and you don't put too much pressure on your piece. Again, there's hardly any support for this right now when you're out here. You got to be real careful with your cuts and what you do um, because. Uh, piece is, is unsupported. So one of the things I will point out at this point is if I've got a cut that's going into the headstock this direction, that's a much safer cut than if I'm going out in either direction, because this way or that way can pull, it exercises a lot of leverage on the piece to pull it out of the chuck. But if I'm going into the headstock, then I the, 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 the pressure is going into the headstock and it doesn't have that same leverage that'll pull the piece out. You can still pop it out if you get too crazy, but you're taking light cuts here, light shearing cuts the whole way. Any other questions on this right now? No, go ahead, Matt. All right. Well, hopefully I haven't put anybody to sleep. This stands a very real chance of coming off the lathe at this point, so... Get your catcher's mitts up. Um, I'm going to keep using the deep fluted bowl gouge. I'm going to use cuts. Uh, one of the cuts is a cut, a, a shearing cut into the center like this. And the other cut is a cut that's also a shearing cut with the, with the, the tool tip raised, very gently pulling outwards. All these cuts are very, very light. Okay. And they're both shearing cuts. And I, I think of them as a, uh, I, I think of this cut, the outward cut, as a blending cut. Okay? And and when I say that is is I'm going to be working my way from the, the rim Like you froze up, Matt. Hiding the bevel into the center, taking very fine shavings. And the blending cut, the pull cut, is you're blending previous cuts together to, to get the surface. So that cut looks like this, where I'm pulling it outwards towards the rim. And I got a couple of cuts. And then I'm going to blend those cuts together to get thin. And that's how you get the, the truly thin, uh, the truly thin rim. And this cut is a safer cut because you're riding the bevel and the pressure is going into the headstock. And you're again, these are light shearing cuts. What you don't want to do is you don't want to put any pressure on the thin, the thin walls at all. So here. 
I'm just taking a very, very light shearing cut into the center. And then I can very gently And I'm not trying to hog this fast at all. I'm just taking a very light cut. And I'm making sure I remove chips so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm, I'm trying to blend the cuts together. Ideally, especially if you're turning this wet, you, you don't, once you get the, 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 the wall thickness where you want it up here, you don't want to come back to it. So I'm using the push cut to shape the bottom to this to that drilled hole in the center. And then I'm using the pull cut to blend the surfaces together. And they're very, very light, especially as I get close to the rim. I'm going to turn on this other light here I've got, and hopefully it won't wash things out too much. And I typically do this a lot faster, so I'm going to turn it up. And I'm watching, like here, I'm watching the outer contours of my piece out here. So, because I don't want to, clearly I don't want to break through my rim, and I don't want to get too thin. And then I can go in here. And then I can keep coming back up. Whoa. <laughs> and let me change where my tool rest is. So that's where I am so far. Hopefully you guys can see that. Yes. All right. Make sure that everything spins good. So, but having that hole drilled in the center really does give you a, a great starting spot for that pull cut to the outer rim. And then I blend it when I get there. Very, very light cut. All right, change where my tool rest is again. Trouble getting in there. Check my wall thicknesses here. I can get a little thinner. Yeah, about three sixteenths. Let's get a little thinner. That's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is bring up tailstock support. Switch to this view here. I am going to use a uh, rubber Chucky no-nose Chucky. Looks like this. It's on my live center. It spins. Now, uh, what I'm going to do here going to just bring it up just so it's just barely touching in there and lock it down and then give it a little bit of a just a ever so slight pressure. Um, one of the things I'm doing, the re primary reason I'm doing this is, I'm, is if I'm going to get thin on the stem, I don't want this to wobble on me. Okay. So if I've got pressure in and I start getting thin on the stem, 
that pressure is going to cause that wood to flex, to bow, introduce chatter, and maybe break the stem. And I don't want to do that. So that's why this is is light. It's it's primarily to keep this bit from 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 moving around, from wobbling back and forth. Okay. Questions on that? Yeah. All good. Okay. okay. Now, before I go further, I want to define where the rest of my goblet's going to be. So I need to define the bottom, and I want to try and cut this bark out if I can. So I'm going to define the bottom here, and then I'm going to define the top of the bottom. So I'm going to define this bit here where I'm going to part it off, and then I'm going to define this. And what that will do is it'll let whatever's left, it'll define whatever's left be my stem, okay? So I'm going to take a, part, a small parting tool here, and I'm going to set that up right now. So I'm going to come in above this bad bark here. And then I'm going to come in on the other side of it to set the top of the bottom. I probably have lost all the bark now, so that's too bad. <laughs> the bark was a little sketchy. <laughs> okay, so that what that tells me is that tells me where the bottom of my piece is here and the top of the bottom. And the rest of it here is stem. I'm going to work my way down this direction. So I'm going to take my deep-fluted bowl gouge, and I'm going to start shaping. I'm always cutting downhill. Okay, um, we're now going to shape the bottom of the bowl and the 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 begin the setting up the features. So for this cut, I'm using a detail gouge, which is essentially a small spindle gouge that's been reground to make it into a detail gouge. And on this, this is a spindle gouge. I, all I did was I swept back the shoulders and I steepened the grind a bit. Okay? And I use this a lot in a lot of my, my fine detail on these pieces. Any questions so far? Any questions? Any more questions? No, nothing noted. Okay, so one of the cuts, I'm going to show this. Let me see if I can zoom here in on this here. Um, one of the cuts that I'm that I'm going to that I'm going to show here is a cut where I'm using, and I'll use a smaller tool than this probably, but I'm going to be on top of the of, of the stem and I'm going to be cutting like this. I'm riding the bevel and cutting with the flute, but it's at a steep angle, so I'm getting a shear cut. I'm getting a clean shear cut like that, okay? And you can see how shiny this is, what kind of cut I'm getting. And I'll switch to that tool in a minute, but I could do it with this tool, and I could keep doing Let me, I want to put another little bead in here first. Clean that up a little bit. Put a bead in here. Put 
and put a little feature here to go out into the stem. Ah. Okay. Now, part of the thing that I'm doing here is I'm getting rid of the material so I can get down inside there and get my tools down in here to make the cuts I want to make. Now this is the this is the key, one of the keys to making a very thin stem. I'm taking a little bit of wood with each cut, but not a lot of wood, and they're very sheer, they're very sheer cuts. So and I can keep making those cuts and I can keep going sm smaller and smaller and smaller. Just taking a little bit of wood at a time. I'm not putting any pressure, if I put any pressure this way, as, as this gets thinner, any pressure this way stands a much bigger chance of, of snapping that. So I don't want to put any pressure on it. I want to let the, I want to ride the bevel gently and let the tool edge do the work. So please feel free to ask any questions you might have at any point. When should you finish the cut, the cup? Well, I do most of my finishing off the lathe. So um, ideally, if you're going to sand, I mean, I can sand it. I can sand the outside right now. So I could sand the cup right now. Okay. Um, and then finish it if I was finishing on the lathe. But I do almost all my finishing off the lathe. I'm spraying uh, spar urethane or I'm applying, say, water lux or something like that. I'm sorry? By wiping it on or anything like that. So, um, but ideally you want to finish the cup before you start working on the rest of it. Okay. You don't want to have to come back to the cup especially not when the stem is thin, okay? So I'm going to switch to a small deep fluted bowl gouge. And it's it's just, a, it's very similar to my large one. It's just not as big, okay? And the reason why I do that is because it's more delicate and I make lighter cuts when I do it. <laughs> Some glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. So, and this is this is where I'm also making those very those cuts where I'm I'm riding the bottom bevel at a steep angle and I'm getting a shear, and I can keep going. Now, one of the games I play with my goblets is. I got to looking at this critically and I realized that if you try to make the stem perfectly straight, then any slight aberration that isn't perfectly straight really jumps, jumps off the piece at you. However, if you make the whole stem curve and there's a slight discrepancy, nobody can tell. So I make my stems all curved. <laughs> I'm not saying my stems aren't aren't perfectly straight. They aren't. But any sort of discrepancies, they don't show up.
And I can keep going thinner on this piece if I want. I'm not putting any pressure on this. Ah. Switch to the detail gouge. So, and I also like to put a little sort of feature under here like that. Sort of round that off. This is not the only way. This is not the right way. There's a whole bunch of different designs. I encourage everybody to, to look at their cabinets and, and look at their, uh, you know, start with your wine glasses in your cabinets or your water glasses or your fine china or whatever you got. So one of the things that I like is I like to see my, my goblet sort of floating off the table. So I like a little bit of a bevel. So I'm going to, with this little parting tool, I'm going to sort of come in and underneath this and put a little bit of a bevel on the bottom of this piece. But what that means is I have to start the bit where I'm undercutting it inside that little bevel so that I've got a little bevel on the bottom. What does that mean? Well, if you look at this piece here, and I don't know if you can actually see it, but there is a, that bevel is here, okay? And then it's undercut starting inside of that bevel so that it sits flat. Any questions on that? No, but I got a question on finishing, Matt. Uh, yes, sir. Can you actually spray a finish when it's freezing in your shop? Uh, no, I don't do, I don't do that inside, Jim. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a I have a, a a quote unquote finishing room in my basement. Okay. 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 Yeah. And, yeah. And, oh, and I was yeah, wondering. It's inside where it's warm. And, okay. And uh, what? So what it is is basically a small greenhouse. You know, it's big enough for me to stand on. It's got some shelves in it. Oh, neat. I've got a, I've got a duct fan that that goes outside through a through a basement window. Yeah. It's sealed, and I put painters tape over the greenhouse, so okay. that so that it's all sealed, and hmm. nobody complains that of the lacquer smell or whatever else I've got going on in there. And it's dust, you know, it, it keeps it relatively dust free. Yeah. But yeah, I'm doing it where it's warm. Okay. Well, I never tried it. I never even thought of it. To answer. So, and I am undercutting this. I don't know if you all can tell from the from the camera angles, but I am coming at this at an angle. I'm undercutting goblet so that it sits on the rim. That's not what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> Okay, so there's my there's my little goblet. I bumped my camera too. So there's the goblet that I just turned. Uh, any other questions? And I've got to clean up this the nub on the bottom, but that's so there's you can see some of the some of the how how thin it is at the edge. And I've got some post processing to do to clean up some of this up here in the rim and a little bit of scorching to do to clean up the bark that came off. Yeah, it looks very nice. Looks great. Well, thank you. Any on questions? Your, Matt, on your bark, um, would it have been more beneficial to soak, soak the exterior of the bark that you wanted to save with CA? Yes, absolutely. Just, oh, okay. Yeah, and, I, and if you can see that this one that I did earlier, I did do that. Um, there is, I don't know if you can see the CA stains, but there's CA. 
And uh, I, you know, what I did, I want to, I want the CA to be on the wood and from, from the wood, from the solid wood into the bark. And I do that right. before I even start on the center. Yep. And then the next step is to come in and, and once you've got, once you've got your inside hollowed, then you do it on the inside too. And you do the yep. same down here too. Okay. And then what kind of wood nice. was that? Is that box shelter? I, I do. I think that this is uh, Bradford pear. Uh, it, I, I pulled it out of my out of my uh, my pile. I got stacks of wood all over the house, so it's uh, right. <laughs> it was followed out, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I one of my we had some we had a storm last spring. It's actually been sitting around for about a year. We had a storm last spring that uh, brought a bunch of trees down, and yeah. uh, I was I got I scored some uh, basswood, some linden, and some. Bradford Pear and a bunch of other stuff. So, <laughs> hey Matt, yes sir. Uh, I use a state of rest when I'm working on that bow part, and that really helps. Okay, well I do have string steadies, and I have used them. Um, I, I one of the one of the goblets I did it had a sixteenth of an inch stem, and it was fourteen inches tall. Uh, so in, in that case, I certainly would recommend using a, a steady rest or a string steady. Um. But as you can see, I could get these done without having to do that, you know, if, if I don't get too crazy. So, you know, I mean, this is only, this is like, I don't know, eight inches tall or whatever it is. So this is one that I just made. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's neat. doable as long as you're careful. Yeah, go ahead, Craig, answer your question. Oh, yeah. No, I was just going to say uh, with the CA glue, uh, what I've been doing to keep it from bleeding on the parts I don't want it, is putting some sanding sealer down, let that dry, and then it kind of blocks a little bit of that CA glue bleeding into yep, that, soft wood or anything. Yep, that's a good idea. Um, one of the issues you're dealing with, I mean, you'd have to be carefully uh, applying that sanding sealer because one of the issues you're dealing with is that you want that CA glue to go into the wood to lock the bark on. So you know, well, yeah, wanna... I'm talking about doing uh, on the edges of. Uh, where you don't want it to bleed too. Yep. I mean, you, you can certainly carefully apply sanding sealer. Um, the sanding sealer I use is spray. It's really kind of hard to do that. So I hear you. Um, I, I This will sand off. So I'm not too worried about, about it. Um, but I do want it into the wood to help lock in the spongy wood and the yeah. bark. So, uh, you know, I, I, I can get the CA glue. I, I can make it a CA finish. Or I can, you know, use the CA glue and, and, and carefully wipe it on so it, it just looks like it's a natural part of the wood. You know, it doesn't look like it's obviously CA glue. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, but yeah, usually, I mean, once you get a good finish in there, usually it goes, you can't see it anyway. But I, it's more important to, you know, while you're turning it to get that lock, to lock in the bark and the spongy, whatever that spongy wood is called. It's got a name. Punky. Ambin. So um, I've also got uh, uh, one more slide here uh, to some more examples and where you can find them. So again, start with your own kitchen cabinets. So your glass or champagne glass to, for shape ideas. So everything on this, uh, all of the, all of those, those little goblets on the left-hand picture on this page, they're all less than one inch in diameter and less than an inch and a half tall. Wow. So when I, when I've got extra wood at the bottom of a piece that I'm turning, I make a goblet or I make a bowl or I make a little vase. I experiment with shapes. Doesn't cost you anything. Extra project wood, right? Yeah. So uh, and you know eventually, I mean, I had a show where I sold like sixty of these things at five bucks a piece. So the small ones. So it's, you know, you never know. So it's, sometimes they'll sell too. So. Mm -hmm. Why do you use a bowl gouge instead of a spindle gouge? At which point? For the majority of the turning. Well, you can't use, uh, using a spindle gouge to hollow is kind of unsafe, okay? Um, I use the bowl gouge for, for, I don't use a roughing gouge or a spindle gouge for almost anything except the details. Um, I, I rough with the, with the deep fluted bowl gouge because it's an extremely versatile tool. And as you saw, I can make one cut and get my shape right from the, you know, 
right from the uh the raw wood from the outer bark i can you know with two cuts i made that i made the uh, the bowl shape and it's an extremely versatile tool i can roll it um it's my favorite tool to use and i, I can get the shearing cuts with it very quickly uh, one of the things i like about that tool to rough with especially is that the amount of tool in the wood is much smaller than if i was using a, a spindle roughing gouge so if I'm trying to create a shape, I have a, a lot more flexibility to, to, to refine that shape very quickly with that tool without screwing it up because I've got a big piece of the tool in the wood. That makes sense. Matt, what's the smallest uh, gouge that you're using? Because you said you went from one to a smaller one. Yeah, let me switch to this camera here and I'll show you the difference. So this is my this is my large deep fluted bowl gouge. Okay. I think it's five eighths outer diameter. Um yep. this is this is the small one. So and I think it's like a half inch outer diameter. Okay, that's the difference. Okay. You guys can can see that. So and this this is like I mean, I use I use my deep fluted bowl gouge for almost everything, and I use this. The, the smaller one a lot, especially for details or thin turning. I use it on, say, making finials and stuff like that. So, and it's it's basically got the same grind as the other one. So, and I know that I know that a number of manufacturers. I think this one is a is a is a Henry Taylor, but uh, that I bought years ago. But uh, I know that Thompson makes a smaller one. I've used a Thompson one because one of my students had one of those. It's a nice, nice tool too. So there's a, you know, there's a number of manufacturers who are making those tools. So uh, yeah, you know, I got uh, one that's a quarter of an inch. And there you go. I do, you, wanted... do you use it? Do you like it? <laughs> I haven't used it. <laughs> well, there you go. Now you know how. So it, it's my favorite mm -hmm. tool to do fine detail with, like like thin turnings, like on finials and stuff, because it, it gives you a lot of control. It's a very light tool. You can make very fine cuts with it. And I mean, I showed you how I got thin on the goblet stem with it. So, um, and this is this is the, this is the no nose Chucky. It's from RubberChucky.com. So, what's your grind on those gouges? Uh, Fifty five degrees approximately. <clears throat> Other questions? No, nothing in the chat. And if anybody had a question that didn't get answered, now's your time to ask it. Good Great job, demo, Matt. Good well, job, thank Matt. You. Thank you. Um, job, Matt. Real nice. Well, I'm typically you, uh, not but, much of a of a goblet guy, but I do like the natural edge at the top of those that you're doing. I I just really like that. I may have to. Yeah, I I, I do too. I, I, I'm I may a have fan. to go to the dark side. <laughs> they're 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 not for everybody, but these do have uh, a Tumblesman Spar urethane finish on them, so you can drink out of them. So uh, the people who love them really love them. But like I say, they're not for everybody. <laughs> so. Right. Hey, Matt, you want to turn another one so you can save the bark? Or you need uh, to go warm up? Do you need, to, do you need me to burn some time? <laughs> well, not necessarily, but yeah, sure. No, dude, I, 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 I have, if you want You're me to cold, turn, some, turn another one, I will. But, but I have, I have like, 30 of these things unsold right now. Yeah. So I don't want to, uh, I don't want to turn any more right. unless, unless you really no, want me right. to. Well, I, well, no, I know it's cold and everything too. I'm you know, part, you know, trying to go you into it and part giving you a hard time. I know you would. I know you would. You yeah, I'm looking around here to see what kind of wood I got that I could use. So <laughs> what he's saying is that's what you get for getting done so fast. Uh huh. <laughs> I was going slow, you guys. Right. Well, was was a little goblet. Hey, hey, Matt, you want you want to show how to turn the top real quick? To turn a top? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, sure. Let me see what I got here. All right. How about some of this? Hey, Steve. Well, Matt, you pulled a wing and turned too fast. I hate it. I hate it when that happens. Made no mistakes either. So, what are you gonna do, All right. right? All right. There's still time. 
Okay. Top. Piece of wood. <laughs> this. Oh, what happened there? That fingered your switch. Yeah, I did. Okay. That's so. Right. In order to make the top spin well, you, you don't you don't want uh, aberration. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off turn off this bark here. Deep fluted bow gouge. Or not. That's <laughs> get my lace started. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Too damn cold. <laughs> well, it's it's a little temperamental. Um, <laughs> I usually don't ever turn it off, but I did there because I was, you know, reaching across myself or whatever. Yeah. So I just turned the turned the speed all the way down to zero. Okay, so You want this down to a really nice point here like that. I'm going to get a, get a really smooth, clean cut here. Make sure I got all the bark off just in case. Oh, I got some more bark to do. So, because I can, um, let's add a little bit of let's add a little, little bit flare. of little bit of flare here. So flare. this is the this is the uh, oh, I got a little bit more bark here yet. Hang on. Okay, this is the uh, Henry Taylor decorating elf, and I'm going to start it not at the center. I'm going to put a texture on and because you guys can't see it I'm going to find my little bit of my alcohol ink stash here which is basically sharpie markers and let's do some purple and stuff all right so Let's put a black line in, black line out here, hmm. and then come back with Okay, I don't know if you can see that. Yep. Let's zoom, mm -hmm. let's, let's zoom in. Yeah, we can see it. So I got a nice spiral spiral texture on there, which is pretty cool. So now we're going to turn the top of the top and the handle. So I've got a little, uh, I've been playing around uh, or doing a little bit of top research recently. And I want to try and put in something that lets me spin it better <clears throat> want to change to an overhead camera yep thank you ruby so that cut is a, is a shearing cut oh oh lunch that's okay no harm no foul Sounds good. Got to keep up standard. <laughs> keep awake. He's competing with me now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there too. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one that that happens to. 
<laughs> take lighter cuts, Matt. Take lighter cuts. Yeah. No rush. Dean wants me to take up some time. There's no pressure. Thank you. So I apologize for the critter noises in the background. Don't and hear a thing. Okay, well, good. <laughs> so. So let's put in another texture mm -hmm. and i don't know let's add this color You guys can see that. I'll show it when I'm done. <clears throat> okay, so what I want to try to do, I'm going to make the little the little handle now. I don't know what you call that on the top of a top. Is it a handle? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Works for me. So, and I mean, can't call it a shifter. <laughs> well, I could. Uh, it's the spinny part. Yeah. So what I'm going to try to do here, and I haven't tried this before, so this is all an experiment. So I'm going to try to make a little bit at the top here that makes it easier for me to spin it. Now, I'm using this same tool, okay, the smaller deep fluted ball, and I'm using the same cuts that I use in the goblet stem. Uh, let me try something here. I want to make this a little smaller. Now I'm getting some chatter because I'm kind of thin and I'm unsupported. But that's okay. Good chatter. Free texturing. Free texturing. That's right. It's a feature, right, Dane? That's right. Looks great with magic marker. Yes, it does. And this is much larger than I like it to be. So I'm going to make it smaller. Okay, so I want to try to knurl this bit up here at the top of this. I have no idea if it'll work or not. So we're just going to get her done. 
and see what happens. Yeah, I either do that or make uh, a semi sphere for the top. Um, it's so much easier for spinning. Yep. So, I don't know. Let's just try and use this tool and see if it works. See what that did. Yeah, that'll work. All right, let me get the uh, one of the things we uh, that that the Henry Taylor um, decorating elf comes with is it comes with this little paintbrush that's been that's had the bristles snipped off. And this is not a plastic or synthetic brush. What it is is hair, actual animal hair. And what you do with it is you do it is you use it on the textures to to get all the fuzzies and stuff off. All right, I like that. So we'll see how it spins in a minute. Let's get get the skew out, which will make all you fanatics happy. Yay. Toothbrush works excellent for that also. Dean it does. Your texture. Well, it does. But your problem with the toothbrush is that it's plastic. Okay. You got sure. synthetic you got synthetic hairs, you know what I mean? Yeah. And they melt real easy. Yeah, and that's the issue. That's why you use animal hair or human hair or whatever. Yeah. Just because well, if, if they're melting on you, Charlie, you're pressing too hard. But you're going too fast. <laughs> but that's <laughs> that's it. That's an issue. So all right. I'm gonna pull out the, the thin parting tool and we'll use that to part the tool. Oh, the captured ring. The top off. Yeah. <laughs> Unintentional captured ring. <laughs> so Top with captured ring. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, so there's the texture on the top of it. Well done. All right, let, oh, let's, nice. see how it, let's see how it spins. Let me get this out of the way. Hold your breath. My, my favorite top arena out, which is a little too dusty, I'm afraid, but we're going to try it anyway. <laughs> so what this is is a piece of willow. That is really big. <laughs> <clears throat> I was going to say invisible for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's back it off. All right. So let's see if this, how this spins. I think that spins pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, it spins. It's yes. all that matters. Yeah, I've got some. Uh, I, I got some small uh, ball bearings that I want to try to put into the into the top here. So there's my uh, there's the texture on the top. There's the nice. texture on, on the other side. But so, Matt, don't do don't do anything greater than two. Don't do it. <coughs> two what? Um, How do you spell um, ball bearings. Bristle brushes. B -R -I -S 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 because the the additional oh, weight oh, will yeah. make it walk really bad oh, okay oh yeah yeah i just wanted i did they're they're small i just want to use one in the i just want to use one in the in the in the tip you know oh, okay as as the spinner yep okay yep you could use a bb too right yep well, that's yeah, what we're it, talking it, about BBs. yep yeah yeah they're, yeah they're small ball bearings same thing yep and i love tops tops are fun questions if you ever look up the physics of the thing, it's unbelievable the physics, the vector forces in it. But it ends up the bigger, the more weight in the whirl, and the smaller the spinning stem, the better it works. Yep. Because yep. it goes and, and faster a, when you spin it. Yeah, and there's a huge science on it. And I have oh. some small ones that are that are hard to that are hard to spin. I didn't get them to spin for like two or three minutes. But they're just, you know, because they're hard, they're so hard to spin because the top is smooth and small. Yeah. And, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to knurl this bit at the top is so that I could really get crank on it, you know. Yeah. And this spins really well. I'm I'm happy with that. So. I made a socket for my drill motor. It really gets it going. Oh, I bet it does. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there's people. I mean, one of the guys uh, at my club did a demo a couple months ago where they were making these tops a uh, ruby you've got these tops uh jay uh jay was over at your place made those tops that stay on top of the stem and don't fall off so 
So I don't know if Ruby's still there, but. Yep, I I do. I've got a couple of them here. Yep. Willow platter. I don't know how big it is, like 16 inches across. Very nice. Yeah, I should finish that. <laughs> well, Archie, thanks a lot, Matt. Great job, Matt. Appreciate You're it. Welcome. My pleasure. <laughs> Enjoyed it. Thanks. All right, anybody else have any questions, comments? Quickly, it's cold there for him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good job, Matt. I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Have a good have, have a good go one. and warm up. Very good, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually doing right. the demos. Got me warmed up. I was doing a lot of moving around. I've got it up to 40 in my shop now. So yeah, right wow. on. <laughs> hey, Matt. Hey, when you were doing the uh painting and you said that there was a pin that you bought that you didn't use an eraser, you could just wipe it off with a washcloth the lines the pattern that you wrote down um <laughs> are you talking about the, the dot painting yeah yeah um the yeah you're you're doing the dot painting on uh, with acrylic paint and right. uh you know as long as the paint hasn't dried if you put it on and you make a mistake you could just wipe it right off i mean typically you've got some kind of uh, a surface film on the on the on the piece before you start painting, like there's sanding sealer on it or something, so the paint isn't going right in. I mean, if it dries, it's a different story, but uh, uh, you know, acrylic paint is is water soluble; it wipes right off. No, I, you said that <clears throat> you draw your pattern out instead of using a pencil because you had to erase it. Oh you, yeah, there was another pencil that you bought that you could. Just wipe it and it would come off. The water watercolor pencils. Watercolor pencils. Okay. That's why I want to know. Yep. Yeah. Um and and a lot of the dot painting stuff, you don't have to there's a lot of those patterns that you that you know you just have to get close. You don't even have to draw, you know, you don't have to use elaborate stencils or anything. You can get really close just by, you know, basic guessing going halfway between the two dots and so on. So but yeah, if, if you're getting elaborate, the watercolor pencils are the way to go because they wipe right off with water. That's correct. Yep. Okay. That's all, all right, I need. Stuff. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Let's go over to Ruby. She's got the uh, top <laughs> that was referenced by Matt. So this is, this is the base for the top that Matt was talking about. This is what the top part itself looks like. And once you get it spinning, what's really nice about it is that it doesn't come off. It's, it just hangs in there. Mm -hmm. Very That's cool. pretty cool. And you can get them going where they'll, they'll spin for quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. Cade did a demo on that for the club probably three years ago. Yeah. Those are pretty cool. So. Thanks, Ruby. Yeah. That, that, right those on. are neat. I saw the one that Jay made when he was over at your house. That was fun. Yeah, he did a good job. Yep. Stop. Don't tell him that though. I don't want him to get a, a <laughs> you know, a big ego or something. <laughs> All right, well, we can, we we'll can't have sure that. Tell him, we'll tell him not to watch this episode then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll see how well that goes over. <laughs> No, no All comment. Right, thanks, In the interest of my ah. continued friendships, no comment. <laughs> right, Matt. All right, let's uh, let's swing back to Captain Eddie and see what he thought about all this menagerie. Hmm. You're, you're you're really that's a description you're of it. Up. Yes, menagerie. And I'm glad y'all kind of put a little pressure on on Matt, you know, to turn a second one. He, yeah, I caught that he was just flying through it because. You do those things for five or ten dollars a piece, they gotta go pretty quick. And you get the knack down. This might say, What what do you use this tool? You use that tool for. Do you know it really doesn't matter what tool you use, is what tool right. you know how to use. 
And that's that's really critical to what we do. Somebody said, why do why do I favor a three eighths inch uh, elliptical bowl gouge? Because I learned how to use it and can do almost all my cuts with it. Because I can go to town with a, a, a three eighths inch bowl gouge, my skew, and my roughing gouge, and I'm home free. I just rock it through the day because I've learned how they slice or how they cut and where the pressure is applied and how I can turn the blade to get the most appropriate slice. And that's what Matt was showing you tonight, where you, you change. Instead of pushing for a cut, you can pull for a cut. You can drag for a cut. You can slice for a cut. And that's the key thing, the slicing for a cut. Less pressure, finer cut, good, good detail. I really appreciate it. You caught a whole lot of detail in what Wayne did, uh, what Matt did tonight, and that's what we do here. We try to share technique and and expertise of how you use your tools, and then you, right there, you Joe Wood Turner, you go to your shop and you use those tools. And what we show you and what we've shared with you to get a better idea of what you can turn out. Now. I was going to reach underneath and get the roll of stickers and tell you that we have stickers available for the club, three-inch vinyl stickers. Uh, there's 10 of them in a, pa in a package for $5. If i got to ship them internationally, i got to get an extra buck. And you pay for that on the website. You can see the details on how to do that. But that's the only enterprise by, you, I mean, by us. And that enterprise is just to help spread the name of the club. Now, if you want to get your your outfit embroidered, in fact, I'm really decided that I'm going to I'm embroidered. We have the logo available. I went and got mine the other day. Had a, a nice vest done. Not the quality I want. So they're reworking it. Let's see what we can save. Really, I think they gave me too cheap a price, so I got what I paid for. So we're going to try to rework that. But I've got a smock back there that I want to get screen printed with Worldwide Wood Turners on it so I can wear it to the SWAT show, which is coming up August 23, 24, and 25 in Waco, Texas. Yes, the boss is about this close to saying, yes, make the reservations. And you can right now make your reservations for the hotel. You can go to SWAT Turners, S W A T U R N E R S dot org and find out all about the symposium. It's to me, it's the finest symposium of its kind because it's put on by a bunch of wood turners. No business wood turners that put this on. And what can they cater to? Wood turning. It's a fun thing. It's, it's like a family reunion with family you really do like. That's what I like about this place. It's, there's no politics. There's no politics. You want to talk to somebody, go and talk to them. You want to chat with them. You want to ask them questions. You want to drill them. Hey, it's fair game. It's a good place to be. And and you're going to run into a lot of folks. In fact, we've already got the team set up to put our own table up at the dining hall and set it all up so we can kind of commandeer the place, you know? So Worldwide Woodturns has got a place in, right there at the front of Waco at SWAT. Um, other things we, we offer is the club has got some hats. I saw Dale had his on tonight. We had to clean up in here because of what's going on in the house. My wife moved all my hats. I can't find a hat. Can't find a jacket, anything. Yeah, she put them in a place that they're supposed to be. Only oh guy I know where that's bad. Um, but we have a deal where if you want to get a hat done, the, the some of the details are on our website, the world's greatest website of wood turning. Um, and you you buy the hat at Amazon and you provide the logo we provide to you. And our logo is free, it's on our website. And you get that. And then for like $6.80, you get a hat. Boom. That's it. Pick the color, pick the style you want and all that. So it's really a nice little deal. So we got all those ways for you to help share the ideas. Now, I just said share because I heard from JJ. He's our editor. Joaquin takes care of putting our newsletter together. A world-class newsletter. An issue came out today. JJ has got a little problem with you folks because you've got all this fantastic work and you're holding back on the photographs. Any ideas? 
and you're not sharing them enough. So JJ wants to know, where are they? Come on. You've shown me some fantastic stuff. You've shown all of some fantastic stuff. Put it in the newsletter. Show the folks a couple of different versions of the piece. You got something really unique? Show it to us. Let's see it. And if you've got a project you want to explain, um, that also goes in the newsletter. I saw today uh, on our Facebook, on, on our uh, newsletter. Oh, I'll get this right. I saw it on our website that um, and we'll kind of find Gerald Jensen put up a piece about a golden ratio uh, caliper. How to lay it out. And a template's available right there for you folks to have a laser burner. You burn one out. Nifty little project. But hey, once you make one, think about the buddy you've got, your returning friend. Make one for him too. And put his name on it. That's a nice thing to do. All right. We're still doing gallery tonight. If you got something to show, all you have to do is go over to chat right now and write, I have something to show. And Easy. Dane will call on you. Once he calls on you, start speaking to us because there's like a hundred little dots on the page in front of him. And he's working on a little bitty page. And he's yeah. got to find your dot that's blinking yellow to click on it and put you up on the screen. That's why I say, well, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Well, we don't know where you are. So once we introduce you, start talking back to us and know where you're at. All right. We're going to go back to gallery right now. It's about 10 minutes after the hour. And this continues on. I stay here till 9 o'clock Central Time. But this conversations continue on, and it gets interesting after 9 p.m. It really does. Because that's when nah, all holes are barred. All bars are holding. One, one, or the other. But, hey, it's free time. This is where we let our hair down. Hair? Hair's terribly <laughs> overrated. What's <laughs> wrong with you our, guys? In, terribly in overrated. Case, in our case, Eddie, we put it on. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. All right, I'll go along with that. Right. <laughs> it's been done let's for get, a long let's time. Let's go to the gallery again. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, fine. Let's, let's, go to, uh, let's go to King Baldy here. Hey, Billy. <laughs> Look at you. You were sitting there minding your own damn business, and you got King. pulled into all this baldness, you know? King Baldy, huh? What's wrong with Baldy? <laughs> <laughs> well, as I'm fond of saying, God only made a few per per yeah. God only made a few right, perfect that. heads. The rest of them he covered with hair. <laughs> That's right. That's what I say. What he looks like. <laughs> so I was contacted by uh, Stormy at SWAT and asked if I would donate a piece to the three in one gallery. And I'm actually very honored to do so. We have to do that, Jim. So I, uh, it, it's invitation only. So you gotta have to wait till they invite you to submit a piece, but I wanted to do something a little bit special and I hope this will work. This is a piece of Arizona ash. Nice. I lasered the design in the top. It had a couple of knots in it that I filled with uh, mother of pearl. Got a boy. It had uh, some spalting on the side that had a little bit of a rot, but I didn't want to lose any more of the height than I had to. So I filled it with mother of pearl as well. And then I turned it off center. I joined the off center or the multi-axis bowl club, but yeah. I did it different than Heather has done. And that some of the others have done. I didn't turn two mortises in the bottom of this, you know, a big one and a small one, like they're showing. I used my duck's chuck. Uh -huh. And it worked. Hey. And it worked. And it worked well. I see a smile over in Duxbury. And, <laughs> and and and, and I, I lasered the bottom and I, I yeah. put the, the date in it. But the thing that makes this one different from most of the other off center or multi axis bowls that you'll see is Oh wow. I've 
shape the bottom so that the bowl sits with the thin part of the bowl right. facing you. Um, <clears throat> that yes. took some figuring. And I ended up cheating. I basically <laughs> I basically found a block that gave me what I want. I, I, and I hot glued this thing to a board. And I ran it through my drum sander until I had it where I wanted it. Uh, so uh, that's okay. I'll figure out how to, uh, I've got to modify my cold jaw so that I can do this in the future. But hey, Billy, if I, you ain't I, cheating, you ain't trying. I like that. Yep. Well, where there's a will, there's a yeah. way. If you make that's a cool. duck, if you make a duck chuck thick and taper it, it'll do that automatically. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> See those look at those eyes. Light bulb came on. Mm. <laughs> it suddenly got bright there. Yeah. <laughs> that version it, number so, seven hundred and thirty-eight. It, it finishes. Yeah, it finishes the uh, four coats of death gloss. <laughs> and I need a buffet, but and I'm happy with it. I, I hope. I hope Stormy finds it acceptable. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Thank you. I'm going to buy me a ticket to try to win yeah. that. <laughs> you probably ought to buy several, Todd. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't had any luck there so far. <laughs> me either. Well done. All right. Thanks, Billy. Thanks. All right. Let's, uh, let's go to Sheila. Hey, Sheila, I heard you got some Hi little there. lambs. <laughs> oh, I've got lions all over the place. Um, this one is a little knock, knock box um, for knocking your coffee out of your pods if you use reusable Keurig pods. So it's just got a little bar that sits in the slot. It's all coated with epoxy and it was the rottenest piece of crappy maple that I've ever seen. It was very, very punky. There's still a piece on the top where the epoxy just kept soaking in and wouldn't stay and cover stuff. So that's one of them. I use it all the time. <laughs> uh, this one, oh, glare. Oh is a little vase. It ended up with uh, the Josonia iridescent paints. It started out a lot differently. <laughs> it was textured and torched and then trying to kind of brush off some of the scorch. I lost the texture, so I retextured it and then I didn't like it and then I returned it. <laughs> So it looks nice. beautiful. Pardon? Looks beautiful. Love oh, the color. Yes. All right. Yes, that's really pretty, Shirley. Yeah, it's kind of fun to do those. So I got the <clears throat> I mean, stuff and I've done a bunch of pieces with it so far. Um, this one may have been a lamb. It's a little other piece of maple that I tried to leave some bark on. Um, I, like I like it. It started cracking in several places after I used the Forstner bit to start hollowing it. It got a little too warm. <laughs> yep. But Looks fantastic. Looks Thank great. You. Another nice piece. So is that drilled or, or is it just is it just drilled with the Forstner bit or is it hollowed all the way? I drilled it. You can still see the dot in the bottom, maybe. Oh, okay. Um, but I also hollowed to try to get the shape. Okay. Got it. Nice, Sheila. Thank you. Right on. Well, she got. That's it. Oh. Oops. There's another one with Josanya, a little um, 
Candle. Candle holder. Yep. Well done. Ready. Nice. And that Run. one was another chunk of nasty cracked maple. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. It looks really good. Thanks. Good job, Sheila. Thank you. Nice. All right. Let's uh let's swing back to Alabama. Let's see what Mr. King's got here. Actually, I already know, but everybody else needs to see it too. Oh yeah. You're still muted, Howard. How's how's that? Much better. <laughs> so is that. Look at that. Well goodness. And the caller is not coming through on the camera. If you're on the Facebook page, go look at it. That's spectacular. Yeah, it is. I agree. Right. Damn. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> Wow. If anybody watched uh, professional wrestling back in the late 80s and early 90s, Ron Simmons had his one word catchphrase and it was, damn. And that's it right there. Wow. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's maple. It's maple. And uh, this is India ink up here. And uh, I, I use spray enamel to coat it. Wow. I just I just kind of went crazy drawing these designs on it. So it, then I burn burn all these black marks or burn marks. With the wow. ball tip, you said, right? Yes. Right. Very nice, Howard. Thank you. Wow. Appreciate it. Very yes. Nice. Yeah, it is interesting. Great yeah. job. That's yeah. a great right. really cool. Been it real fast. My be illusion or something. Okay. All thank right. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's uh let's go to Terry. <clears throat> yeah, you find me? Where yeah, I'm getting I'm, you. I'm, I'm there. My I'm fingers there. only move so fast. Oh, Y'all get impatient. Go ahead. <laughs> I forgot I had unmuted it. I was looking to unmute it. But anyway. <laughs> Kind of sticking with our theory with a map for the night. These are some that I did a while ago. There's some goblets. I hand do the spiraling on them. I just draw a line through there and then take a file and start on them. And they're, they're kind of thin. That one's about eight, nine inches tall. And it's mesquite. Nice. And this is another one, a little smaller, the same idea. Just kind of Turn the leg down real slow and run your pencil up it real fast and then get a pile and start on it. There you and, go. Uh, it'll work. That one's a little smaller. This one's a little smaller. And then I got one that's a little smaller. And then I don't drink, so I made a little one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's about an inch and a half long. It's, half inch in diameter. <laughs> but then I was making those and I started making some offset ones. These are this is offset turning. I think yeah. you can get an idea what yeah. it looks like, but it's, yeah. it's offset. Oh. This is mesquite as well. They're not too tall. Pretty. They're about six, seven inches tall. There's another one mesquite about the same idea. These are really pretty easy to make once you get the idea of it. Yeah. I don't I don't use any centers or anything. I just put them in a regular, I got a either one-way stronghold or a one-way tail and chuck. I just turn a tenon on it. And then I put it in and put, shape the top and shape the top of the first ring after I've hollowed it out, shape the top of it. Sand it and finish it because I don't ever want to go back there again. Then I set the tool rest up on the side of it at about 10 mil off of it. And then I just take it and loosen the chuck up and turn it over until it touches the tool rest. That puts it at, like a, say, a 10 mil offset. And then finish this area in the top of the next one. And then turn, after you do that, put a mark on it and turn it 180 degrees, put, the, put it up on a high spot up against the tool rest where you've, you know, 
just turn it so it's high over on the tool rest, turn it up to the high spot on the tool rest, and then turn it 180 degrees, loosen the chuck up and turn it back until it hits the tool rest again. So then you've got it, if you understand what I'm saying, you got a, a 10 mil off the other way, then you turn this one and finish it, then you go back to center and, and turn the bottom. And they're pretty easy. This one was part of the two by four club. I had to get involved with that. So I did the same thing. It's small, it's three and a half, four inches tall. It's got a lot of grain texture to it for sure. And then this one, I don't know what this is. Maybe, maybe uh, cottonwood, I'm not sure. Something I had out there, but that's another one I was practicing and playing with. These stems in here are a little big because I'm, I'm actually turning this off center so I don't have anything up here holding it. So I'm, it's flopping pretty good. So these the stems are about a quarter of an inch in diameter on all of them. Hey, Terry, I, I just thought you might like to see them. Say what? I got a question for you. Have, okay. Have you ever just, have you ever made just one of something? No, <laughs> I got to figure out how to oh. do it. I got to keep doing it until I get it right. <laughs> Everything he's one? made, he's made over and over and over again. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I try to figure out how to do it. You can't settle. <laughs> <laughs> nice the first job. One's there. always a prototype. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> right? Is there something wrong with doing that? <laughs> no. no, there isn't, Charlie. No. Good How many lampshades did you make? How many did I make? The lampshades. Uh, oh, about 20. That's what I thought. <laughs> Maybe 22. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't got wow. that perfect one yet. I guess I haven't made the perfect one yet. I still got some more wood I'm waiting on getting cured a little bit. <laughs> yeah, see, that's what I was getting ready to say. And you, you might have made twenty or twenty-two, but you ain't. You're not done yet either. Jeez. <laughs> no, I don't have that perfect one yet. I probably never will have. <laughs> I mean, hey, Brenda, you made, like Brenda, you've made ten or twelve mirrors now, right? Yeah, I made several mirrors. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And frames. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Frames. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Got me. That's actually, it's actually about half of the goblets, <laughs> or less. Wow. There's, there's a few out there. <laughs> yeah, we are all guilty of it. Well, I'm always trying to improve my bowl turning too. So I don't know how That's many bowls way. I've burned. Sometimes I go out there and put little pieces of two by four on it. And just turn, just make little things. They got a whole box full of them. Call them skill builders. They got all, all kinds of spindles with captured rings. And I got one piece of pine. It's about oh, 10 inches long. And it's got like 40 captured rings on it with a about an eighth inch spindle in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> And it was done, it was all done with a skew and stuff. It wasn't done with a with a beading tool or a ring tool. But I tried to figure it out. Yeah. So that's what I got for tonight. Very nice. Right Terry. on, Terry. Nice. Thanks for sharing. Good job, buddy. Terry. Yeah. All right. So, Let's go to Mr. Phipps. Sure. All right. Hey, All right. Hey, Todd, thank you. we got you. Yeah, so a, a couple of weeks ago I had made and shown this parting tool that I made and then we had a pretty extensive conversation about it in the after hours, and I agreed with what was said there, basically, that this probably won't hold up without a ferrule or something on it, and I bought five pieces of that steel, so I went out there and turned a, turned a handle for it. Oh, boy. Used, thank you very much, yeah. But, uh, You're welcome, Todd. <laughs> you know, I, I got to tell you, so, you know, I, uh, I put this thing between centers, and um, turned a tenon on this end so I could chuck it up and drill the hole out. I uh, drilled the hole out. I cut my little half inch piece of uh, copper pipe uh, uh, um, right. coupler. Copper pipe. Um, yeah, right. To put to put on there uh, as a ferrule. Drilled out the inside of it and I took it off the lathe and hammered the ferrule on it. And while it was off, I thought, well, heck, that looks pretty good. I think I'll go ahead and 
glue my piece of steel in, but I hadn't finished turning the dang thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I glued my steel and didn't turn it. So I basically finished off the end of it and whatever with uh, with sanding on on the end of it. And uh, so it uh, it just a silly silly mistake. wasn't thinking. I just hammered that you know glued yeah. that thing in there and epoxied it and set it aside. Excited. Looked at it later and thought, what the heck? So, uh, you know, you got I three more. It. So I had um, a piece of, uh, you know, they'd make those six in one screwdrivers that they sell at Home Depot. And I had one of those sitting there. And so I just made a handle. So I thought, well, I'll put a ferrule on and pull that thing apart and make a little six in one, uh, you know, there screwdriver you out of some, some maple. And so I, uh, I did that up and then, you know, I, I always have to put some kind of dye or something on yeah, stuff. And so I dyed it. Um, a, a couple of weeks, like three or four weeks ago, Paul had demoed and then he was talking about shapes of things. And he was like, he had said something that if he was trying to show off sort of the, the wood on something, he would use more of an open form, like an OG or something. And, and so I, I had turned this piece of myrtle um, after, after that. And, uh, and then uh, use some uh, Mahoney's uh, walnut oil to finish it. But uh, but I do a lot of shapes like that. And, and what, what I hadn't been doing is when I use color and stuff, I hadn't been rounding over the outside of it that allows the, the outside of it to show a little more. So I've been, right. I've been playing with some of the more uh, um, the, the closed form. So when it's sitting there, you can see the outside of it more. So I, I made this little bowl out of sycamore, and then I uh, I made this one right here with um with with some walnut, so it, it it rounds over on the top a little more and it sits there. I can can see it a little better. And then uh, last night my brother showed up at the house and had a piece of cherry, and so I turned a little cherry bowl last night and I sort of continued that same shape on the. Uh, on the cherry last night, so I did a little cherry. You were paying bowl. attention. You were paying attention. They they look really nice, Todd. So nice, I'm trying Todd. to really? trying to change some of the shapes I do right. and whatever because I really get caught in that same shape all the time. And uh, like ten years ago, I had been playing with uh, doing segmented rings as a sort of a feature ring at the rim only of a bowl, like 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 this. So a like walnut on maple. And, uh, and I made like eight or 10 of them. And most of them, when I made them, they were, man, they just, I left them really thick and the bottom really thick and stuff on them. And, right. and, and, and they were just finished with like uh, mineral oil and beeswax or something to be usable, but I've never liked any of them. I have two of them left. All the other ones disappeared and I ended up with the two big fat ones. <laughs> so I rechucked up one of those and thinned it out a little <laughs> bit and, um, and did a little there better finish nice. on it. Yeah. So you know, how so, much wood was left, huh? Uh, yeah. Right. So th this one <laughs> right here was even thicker than <laughs> this there. one. But um, yep. but but so uh, I might take this one and do the same. But uh, I might leave it as sort of a reminder of of what the what the difference the could journey. be between right. between them. So yeah. Um. Yeah. Sort of revisiting, and then good on you for showing that. Just like just like everybody else, you know, I end up with little uh, underutilized project wood, and so I, I took a couple of little pieces of it, and I was just I was just using it to play. It made a little um, little box, but I was just using it to play with some of the um, uh, carnival colors from Hampshire Sheen because I haven't been real happy with how that stuff applies, and it doesn't go on well, and and and, and so I. I I, I, I had turned this piece and put some finish on it and didn't like it, turned it off, refinished it. I did that like three or four times. And I basically just started with it big and round, playing with it, just trying to play with those finishes and then cut it off and cut it off and cut it off. And then finally got to where it was just a little, you know, a couple of little pieces that made a little box. So I, I did that the other day also. So looks nice. Um, nice. And then went out into the shop, had an extra fifteen or twenty minutes a couple of times, and turned a couple of uh, <laughs> turned a couple of yeah, little pens. Pretty. So that's all it uh, takes, start to finish. Yeah. So you know that that's what got me into turning. I was doing a bunch of flat work like yeah. fifteen years ago, and 
it would take me months to finish a project and then uh, yeah. realized I can finish a, a, a lathe project in a, you know, in, 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 a, in an evening easy and, you know, instant satisfaction. Self-gratification. Yep. So, yeah. Yep, that, All right, that's, that's what started that's what my I, journey. Yeah, that, right. It's the same just, thing, you know. Yeah, yeah it makes a huge too. difference. So, yeah. and I, it, the stuff wasn't, covering the floor of my garage for four or five exactly. months and having my wife yell at me for not being able to park in the garage. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and I appreciate plants up laying everywhere and, and there's nothing for you to work on. Yeah. And, and I appreciate her not being upset about that probably more than she appreciates her not being upset about <laughs> it. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, all right. Good Thank stuff. you. Sir, Nice All right, stuff. let's go, to, go up to the great uh, white north here and see what Mr. Mr. Cade's got going on. Hey, Cade. Cade. <laughs> he ran off. He ain't there. <laughs> Cade has oh, left. Here we go. I see him. I see him. I see him. I see him. I got you, Joaquin. I <laughs> already got you down, Joaquin. There we are. Hey, everyone. Hope all is well. Uh, it's been a while. I've been quite busy with uh, classes, courses, demos, and uh, raising a toddler, so that's keeping me busy. So I have a few, quite a few things to show, I guess, if we have time. <clears throat> yeah, take all the time you want. All righty. Um, first off, I guess I'll show something fairly easy, I guess. Um couple days ago, actually two times last week, I had two bowl classes at two different woodworking schools in the area. So this is one small bowl we did. This was the demo piece I did. So I would demo the outside. They would turn the outside. I would demo the inside. They would demo the inside. Then I would demo removing the tenon and they would do so. So no incidents. Actually, there was one incident. Um, you know, when you're turning the outside, then you come to do the inside. You always want to soften this edge once you true up this face because it's quite a sharp edge. And especially with ash and the open grain, it mm -hmm. makes it like a serrated steak knife. So I was very adamant in telling everybody, soften those corners, let the tool do the work, don't push the cut because you may slip into the piece of wood. And lo and behold, one of the students was pushing a little hard, slipped into the wood, slipped into the rim of the bowl. And um, all of a sudden I went from wood turning instructor to nurse Cade, and I had to uh, mm -hmm. fix up his hand with gauze and all kinds of stuff. Um, I ended up using butterfly band-aids to hold stuff together. <clears throat> and then he emailed me the next day saying he needed five stitches. So um, good thing good thing for him. He went and double checked and got it checked, got all fixed up. But he did still finish his project. And then after that, I had another. <laughs> yeah, he could have used super glue or something, but um he didn't mind. I think he left there and went and got stitches. So it wasn't, or he went home and he talked to his son, who's a paramedic and his paramedic told him where to go and what to do. So it was good. He listened to his kid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this was another one I had another one. I did. This was all of Ash. Um, this was a, another bowl turning class. I had three students here in my own shop. I have three lays that I can teach on. Um, so that was fun. That was the bowl I did for that demonstration. No incidents is, that day. So I didn't that have the hardwood at the bottom, Kate. Yes. The dark yeah. is the heartwood, and the white is the sapwood. This one was all sapwood. It was quite a massive tree. Um, I but like I like this ashes, one more. Pretty. I like this one a lot more with the color contrast. Yeah. Um, and it's on the bottom as well. There we are. So those were a couple bowl classes I did. Um, my club still makes wig stands. 
So I did a demo for them. And there was another club that heard about it. So I had to do a demo for them. So here's a wig stand. The base is brown maple. The spindle is figured walnut. They're not quite Pretty. glued together yet, so they're a little tippy. I'm holding them together, but uh, still a great cause for um, people that go through so much heartache when they have to get treatment. Um, so that's one I did. This was another one I did for a different club. Now this one is Ash for the base. There we are. The spindle is red oak. And the top is also ash. So I'll glue these together. I also have another four in the back that I think I showed a couple months ago. Um, so I'll deliver all six to the club and we'll, uh, we'll get those delivered to where they need to go. Um, this, I've been playing with boxes and multi-access finials. I do quite a lot, multi, quite a lot of multi-access turning. Some are easier than others, so I'll go simple to the most complex. Um, here's a tiny little box out of maple I had, and I just turned the lid off center Cute. to make to make the flame off center something a little small cute impulse buy for a for a craft sale or a gallery um another one i did got a little more complex i did the lid and this lid was done on i think it was six axes wow yeah. well done and then on the Cool. On the on the final axes, I did the little divot ring in the bottom um, of the lid there. Wow! So that was fun to do. Tiny little trinket box or a ring box. Um, then they got a little more complex, doing twists and more off center, more adrenaline rush. Um, so here's one. Out of cherry and the finial turns as it screws with the flame on top. <laughs> there we are. Inside's finished, but the outside's not quite finished yet. Um, and then there's the top. Uh, Multi-access finials will be one of the demos I'll be doing in England at the AWGB International Symposium in October. So if anybody is over there, pop by, say hi. Nice. Well done. Yep. So that one is cherry on top with a walnut, walnut lid and base. Spanish. I've uh, been whipping quite a few of things off because there was a lady up in Barrie who was moving and she's like, come on up. I got a lot of wood. You can have it. If you don't get it, the people who are taking the house will just burn it. So I was so busy and I was trying to get up there for probably five, six months. And then she was like, look, you know, make some time to get up here because we're only here till the end of February. So I went up there and I was so happy I did because there was 12 foot long cherry slabs, walnut slabs, wow, two, wow. three, four feet wide, oh. uh, three, four, five inch thick. I loaded my van and my wheel well was this close to my tires. <laughs> <and> my <laughs> um, <laughs> so I got lots of walnut, lots of cherry, uh, some sugar maple, some spalted maple, some ash. Um, and when I drove in, I was drooling because she was selling the house. And she's like, oh, yeah, I'm on uh, 38 acres and it's just my playground. That's why I got so much wood. And I'm like, wow, what are you selling the place for? If you don't mind me asking, because uh, 
and it was just beautiful. I was like, okay, I'll have so many things situated here, there, and wherever. So here was another one with a walnut top, and it twists. The top twists off to one side, and then the flame mm. is also off to one side. <clears throat> there it mm. goes. So are you buying the house? No, it was a little out of my price range, but I <laughs> wish. <laughs> I was drooling. Um, I was like, do you want to put me in your will? <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah it was quite amazing i even told my wife and took pictures and she gave me a tour and i'm like we can go halves with steve and elisa our best friends right and we'll just have two houses and i'll have a gun range and an archery range and a wood shop and a storage <laughs> barn and uh all kinds of stuff i was just drooling but uh it was great um so then going a little more complex uh, this is Cow Rosa with Walnut. This was a club demo probably six months ago or so. Um, mm -hmm. That one's not too complex, but the one I did today is quite complex, and I'll save that for last. This was another demo. I wouldn't make a finial this large, but it was a demo to show so many different elements and ways you could turn that finial to get different different things, different curves, different twists. Um, so that was a club demo. Um, but I mean, there is no real rule in off-center turning because it's all asymmetrical. Nothing is symmetrical. Yeah. So you can go out of the realm of the finial is one-third, two-thirds, or two-fifths, three-fifths, or proportional to the piece. Um, this is one out of spalted maple, or ambrosia maple. Uh, this one is a little more proportional, and it did also show all the different things that you could do with different twists, different curves, different off-axes. I don't use any special chucks or anything for these. Um, and I'll be demoing that in England. Uh, this is the one I did today. <clears throat> so a lot more complex. This <laughs> is black walnut for the box. I did some burn lines and some texture. Um, and the finial twists on so many different wow. axes. I think that was... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven or twelve axes for that finial. Hmm. Wow. That's nice. nice. It shows better on the back there. And you got the bird at the bottom. Yeah, and then the bird on the bottom. So this is not glued in yet, but so I'll take that out. And then here's the Here's the box. Here we are here. Some texture, some burn. Mm -hmm. Walnut. There we are there. Nice. Excellent. Excellent. That's where the match is. You can't even see the seam. Um, no, that's where it opened at. <laughs> so that was fun. I just finished that during the meeting. Um, this was a box I demoed for a club. I can't remember which club it was because I've been fairly busy with demos. So this is Bloodwood, and this is actually the demo piece I turned. Um, I used Bloodwood, and this is African Blackwood for the finial, for the demo. Um, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Uh, here we are there. Yeah. Hey, Doug. There's yeah. that guy. Hey, Doug. Yeah. And then I'm not demoing that, but this is a box I do. This is one I'll be demoing in England. This is a water droplet box I do. Wow. Yeah. Nice. nice. Oh, wow. Normally a little longer and thinner and sometimes bent or whatnot. So this was um what is it uh this was poplar that was dyed um 
Very wow. Nice. Wow. Can, wow. Can you yeah. give a little refresher on your finish there? How you put <laughs> uh the finish is tongue oil. Okay. Uh many, many, many coats sanded in between, final coats buffed um with micro mesh and water. Um first couple coats are thinned 50-50 till I make a base. Once I have a base, I put it on pier. I put it on thin coats. I don't wipe it off after. I let it cure. I let it dry. Stand in between. Put another coat on. Stand in between. Put another coat on. I used to count. Now I just go until I'm happy with the finish. If I were to count, since that's poplar, that's probably 12 plus coats. Um, mm -hmm. But it's therapeutic, and I like I like the sheen <laughs> I get. Um, Beautiful. Uh, these were a couple Lotus Bowl demos I did for a club last week. These are out of Black Walnut. And these were just prepared out of logs. So they have the pith with the eyeball in the center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then here the pith comes offside here. Nice. So those were... Nice little contrast between the heart and sapwood there. There we are there. Um, and then this one I also demoed. I was a little too quick. They wanted me to fill in like Matt. Um, so I turned another one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. With the pith in it as well. Yeah. With the pith. Blowing the blowing the smoke out of the pith mess. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can leave the pith in stuff as long as it's less than three eighths of an inch. And these are eighth of an inch wall thickness. So on the base, it's probably an eighth or maybe three sixteenths. Um, so well under three eighths. And in turning stuff less than three eighths, you remove the stress from that pith. Um, that's another thing I'm demoing in England um, in October and this one as well I'm demonstrating in England um, in October and then live oak bowls. But I can't wait for that. That'd be fun. So that's oh, it that. for me. <laughs> hey Cade. Wow. Hey Cade. Yes. Do you do you carry insurance or you have your student sign waivers or what what do you do? How are, you, how are you how are you labeled? Liable, I'm sorry. I have insurance. I've covered with insurance for uh theft, liability, injury, all that stuff. And I also have them sign a waiver. Okay. So solid indemnity clause. Yeah, it's best to cover your ass and have insurance <laughs> sorry pardon my pardon my french or english um that's a, pro that's a proper adjective <laughs> um because i find a waiver depending on the lawyer and the court system you're working with a waiver isn't worth the paper it's signed on right so okay. have insurance yeah. definitely yeah indeed all right. Well done, Kate. Thanks for sure. <laughs> nice Thanks to have you much. back. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Fabulous. Let's, Fantastic. Uh, let's go back to so, Eddie here real appreciate quick. seeing you. He does all that and he's still raising a, a son. With all that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, before we duck out tonight, I gotta let you if y'all hadn't seen Jim Duxbury on this tonight, I mean, we've seen a little bit of Jim. I want to show you Jim. That's Jim Duxbury right there. You see him? Yeah. That's the, the duck. Uh huh. Right there on a front. He's on a cover of Wood Turning Magazine this month. This issue just came out today. Um, as we were chatting here tonight, I got a little bleep on my iPad. Yes, that, Tim, I know. Uh, newsletter uh, magazine downloaded. And I said, Whoa, what magazine downloaded? And there it was. It came in. I paid $3.27 a month to get this out of Amazon. And it's got his article, an uh, article by Jim and some of the other stuff that's in here. Great magazine, not sponsored, not sponsored, just 
if I had a, my preferences where I'd go for wood turning magazines, I'd go to wood turning. Yeah, it's pretty much that's it. And if I want to find out the little nitty gritty about wood turning, I'd go to Duxbury and, and talk about a coincidence, isn't it? And Jim's always there to help. He always pops in to share a little something here and there. And uh, he's got more ideas than all we can ever stand. But then yeah. we call him around. He's been a great add to the club since since him and Rita joined in with us. Hey, if you're not if you're not involved, get involved, and get involved because you see, as you just saw, we have professional turners like like Cade. Cade's out of Canada. Uh, he teaches. He handles IRDs. And when he has an IRD, he posts it on our chat, and then it goes into our, our event calendar. Um, but he's like a handful of other turners, professional turners, that not just cater to us, but belong to us and help us and endorse what we do. And he's done some great demonstrations for us. If you've never seen one of his demonstrations with the SKU, we have them online right now on our list of, of demonstrations. Look up one for Kate Bolger. And take a look at it. He uses a skew sort of unlike some other people do. And all I'd have to say is it's like he took a really good pocket knife out and started whittling because it's about that perfect. So check that out. Um, we have demonstrations each and every week, and they're not restricted to certain members. They're restricted only to members who wish to share their techniques, their designs, their opportunities, their ideas, uh, their tricks, their tips and all, which means it's yours. All you have to do is pop in and say, hey, I'd like to do a demo on this. What is it all about? Put it in chat. Dane will contact you and line it all up and get everything going. And we always talk to demonstrators who do IRDs and programs, and we promote those. Now, again, no money ever changes hands in this. We're not sponsored by them. But it's a source of information that you should have as a wood turner and you should share into. So if you get a chance, dig deep, find something, send it to us. If you got photographs of your work or you got a project you developed or something, you just went, oh, oh man, you know what I got? Oh, oh why don't I need to do this? Make an article out of it and send it on in to editor at worldwidewoodturners.org. It's just that simple. You'd be in a newsletter. And if if you want to share any ideas you have, jump on board and tell us you want to do it. That's it. This is your wood turning club. It's coming to go on top of the hour in just a few moments. At that point, I normally duck out. That doesn't mean I quit. Doesn't mean you quit. That means about a hundred people sit and still chat, talk about wood turning, share ideas, thoughts, dreams, and problems. And we fix everything, everything dealing with wood turning and a little bit more. So with that, I'm Captain Eddie Castle. And on behalf of everybody that's involved in this organization, please, when you go out in the shop this week, be safe, come back healthy. Y'all take care now. See you next week when we get back out All on right. the good night. and have good a good night. time. Good night, Eddie. Yeah. All right, Eddie. Good take night, care. Eddie. Yeah. Good night, Eddie. Right, folks, we got, good we night, got night, Eddie. more galleries here we're going to get in. So, yeah. Eddie, and watch out. Can, can, you, can you mention what we saw tonight? Can you find that anywhere else? No. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Look at my pen. I'm out. I know. Look, I'm out. Look at the head on this guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Cade, let me tell you what uh, the queen of multi axes, Barbara Dill, would be very proud of you. Those are fantastic. I've done a lot of that. I've never done finials like that. It's a challenge. Challenge. It's tricky. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you know, about six months ago, I started turning these birds and ducks and cranes, and I had a young guy over the the other day and we played around with this and that's that kind of a big beak i'm going to call him a stork but hey, uh, you stayed with the spalting thing very yeah. nice spalted pecan Great. yeah but i thought tonight i'd share y'all share my wife's uh egg collection she's been collecting for several years and this is just all kind of wood uh the swallowed wood and mesquite and well this is texas ebony uh, oh, very. Wow. She buying no man. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Where's she buying them at? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I got it. (laughs) But uh, this is some mesquite, and I give some to my sister, and she had them in the bottom of the bow, and she said, Hey, what are all these ashes in the bottom of the bow? And I said, You got to find a hoe and go in there and kill the worm. So. I haven't done much resin. This was a, a piece of resin that uh, it has a burl in it, and it, it turned out real nice. Was mm-hmm. back up, nice. It's only the second piece I've done with burl, but I uh, it also did a uh, did a challenge. Well, that, yeah, I remember that. That's ready. Yeah, uh, I meant to make a box out of it, but uh, this was so much work. And staying between the lines, it yeah. left it alone. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. We know what you excelled at in kindergarten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How long did that one take? Oh, it, hours? it uh, probably about 10 hours. Oh, okay. just, you know, the wood burning helps to oh, stay cool. between the lines, but it's like when you put that first coat on there. You go back the second time, oh, you didn't cover everything. And so I haven't done many of these. Then I did a box, took a piece of mesquite, did an egg box. Cool. Oh, boy. Nice. nice. Very nice. Mm. Egg holder. But then they, had, they have a kit on, uh, I think it's, uh, it's Craft Supply. Good night, Steve. Catalog. This is a uh, kaleidoscope. I think I might even be able to give you a view of it. Let's see. Oh, a little down. There, there we go. It. There you go. Yeah. Oh, boy. Cool. Look at that. Cool. Yeah. Right on. That's cool. Very cool. Yeah. And uh, I give most of these I give away to the children's hospital. And I kept this one. And uh, But uh, we, we make eggs out of pine or some kind of trash wood and uh, give them to the children's hospital to paint them. And uh, this year, nobody was interested. So we went to Hobby Lobby and online bought about four dozen to send over there to let them paint. Nobody wanted to do plain wood. And I understand that, but uh, we we, we filled our end up on that. That's good. Thank you, guys. Good stuff. Thanks, Joaquin. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Very nice, Joaquin. Fine. Thank you. Very All right. Let's go nice. over to John. He's still on. There he is. Yeah. We got you, John. There I am. Thanks for being uh, patient. I was walking in the neighborhood the other day and uh, came across a place where the owner of the home had committed crepe murder. And if you all know what crepe murder is, that's when you take your when you cut the crepe myrtle tops off and let them branch oh, out, you know, they grow yeah. all the time. You don't do that. And I had some nice pieces to pick up. So I, you know, I'm into candlesticks sometimes and I made one that. Mm. Wow. A little uh, different. A little different. I like to let the nature take its course and. Sure. Show you what it can do. So, you know, it, it, oh. nature is uh, oftentimes much better than we are. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Hopefully, nobody will ask how you drilled that hole through the center. That, that looks great. Yep. <laughs> well, you know, that's that the center hole there is where the tree had come around and, and reattached. Right, right. Right. <clears throat> right. I, 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 was, I was a joke, but. <laughs> I mean, yeah. um, the <coughs> green is <clears throat> the color of the of the bark under the outer, and, the and I don't know whether it'll turn brown or later on or not, because this was just finished. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well done. Nice. I like the way you preserved the the natural look of the of the wood there. It's that's a good job. Yeah, that's it's um. Oh, well, cool. A lot of character. Yeah, it looks like it a heart. 
Yeah, when, when you talk about top, you know, talk about uh, cutting out the, the centers of, 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 of a little great bird on the side of it if you want to. There you go. <laughs> Cute. But back at my wife's grandmother's, uh, she had a crepe myrtle. I don't know how, how old it was. It wasn't that big, but um, my wife's sisters were, you know, trying to help out. And they went out there and they started trimming the tree. And, of course, you know, they lopped it out. And I'm like, well, you just ruined that. I go, you only got one more cut to do, you know, right right down at the ground. Oh, why would I do that? I go, well, you just killed it. May as well have killed it. So, rest of the time, you know, they're constantly cutting limbs all the time. Whatever. <laughs> Great job. Thank you. All right. So, with that, this embarks the end of the official meeting, and the after hours is now going to commence for those that want to stay.